Kitty feels her girlfriend pulling away. With fears of neglect and abandonment, Kitty comes to question her companion's intentions. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Brittany and I have been together for about two and a half years. Uh, we met at a ceramics class. We were both going to the same community college for a while. Uh, she's definitely a creative type, and uh, that, that's probably my favorite thing about her. But uh, I don't know, lately things have been getting weird. A lot of conflict. I feel like she's trying to push me away. Brittany Foster, age 24. An aspiring musician suspected of changing the instrument of her relationship. Cheaters Brass deploys a squad to the house Kitty shares with her girlfriend. After some time, Cheaters operatives catch sight of the suspect leaving with her guitar. Unaware of the Cheaters' shadow, Foster drives across town to an upscale coffee shop. She carries her guitar with her into the shop. When Foster appears on the patio, she has an unknown male in tow. The pair find a table and sit down. Well, we went to this show together and uh, met this band. She was crazy about them. I, they're not really my thing. Um, and she's been going to a lot of their shows, you know, which I don't mind. But she just asked me if I would mind if she went on tour with them, said she's going to help them with some things on the road. And I'm not sure I'm OK with that. It seems a little weird as much time as she's spending you know, with these guys. Um, I wouldn't mind, but it just, I don't know, just something about it feels really wrong to me. She's always at the shows, always at the after parties. The suspect and her tutor begin their lessons. The unknown guitar teacher slides his chair closer to his student. After the lesson, the teacher strums his student's thigh in a more than friendly manner. Sometime later, Foster hugs her instructor goodbye. She then leaves, eventually ending the day of surveillance when she arrives home. You know, she used to do all these sweet little things for me. She'd leave me little notes to come home to, you know, on the counter, and she'd... I'd be getting dressed, and she'd just... <sighs> tell me how beautiful I was over and over again, and I... I thought it was silly. But, uh... It doesn't... It doesn't happen anymore. And I'm not always the most affectionate person, but... I go out of my way to do sweet little things for her and to tell her how much I love her, how wonderful she is, and I... Maybe I don't do enough, but I don't know. I'm, I'm doing everything I can. I don't know what else to do. This evening, the suspect leaves home followed by a cheater's mobile unit. Foster arrives at a bar. The suspect disappears inside, and once cheater's agents find her, Foster has planted herself on a patio table sitting next to her guitar teacher, now identified as Cole. Foster holds her tutor's hand under the table, and during the evening, Brittany passionately kisses her new paramour. As the night winds down, Foster passes out hugs to everyone. Cole escorts Foster to her vehicle, where they share a few more kisses. Eventually, the suspect tears herself away from her bow, gets into her car, and leaves. Cheaters tails the suspect back to her home, ending this night's surveillance. Sticking with a stakeout of Kitty in Foster's home, Cheaters observers spot their mark kissing her girlfriend goodbye. Kitty drives off to work, leaving Foster alone in the house. After some time, Cole arrives and parks in front of the house. The young rocker knocks on the door and gains entry. Interior cameras placed by Kitty capture images of the two musicians getting comfortable on the couch. After a glass of wine, Cole leaves for a moment to indulge his smoking habit. When he returns, he sits down and immediately begins kissing the suspect. Raising the heat level, Foster then climbs onto Cole's lap. The pair continue to kiss. Foster helps her companion take off his shirt. And in due time, the suspect stands up and leads Cole to another room. 
Cheaters wraps up the case for a disenfranchised kitty. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's devious actions now on display, Cheater supplies Kitty with insight to reality. Distraught with dark thoughts, Kitty meets with Cheaters to gain a vision of the truth. Kitty, I just want to say thank you for coming out this afternoon. I understand we had to pull you away from a couple things. Well, as you know, we have conducted our investigation and come up with some pretty interesting findings. Are you prepared to see that, Kitty? I guess that's what I called you for. All right, fair enough. All right, Kitty, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. A short time later, we see Brittany come out holding a guitar in her hand. She walks over to her vehicle and she leaves. A short time later, she arrives at a coffee shop. We then see her meet up with this gentleman. You don't recognize him, do you? I've seen him. I, I don't know him, not well anyway, but I've seen him. So it's a familiar face? Yeah. Continuing on, we see Brittany begin to recite what I see to be music, and he's doing the same thing on his guitar, maybe a lesson, I would say. A while later, after finishing up the guitar lesson at the coffee shop, he gives her a hug goodbye. She leaves the coffee shop by herself, and she returns home. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of your residence. We see you and her walk outside. Do you remember this day? I do. We see you leave, and a few moments pass, and this vehicle arrives. That's when we see that gentleman from the previous day get out of his vehicle, walks up to your door, and he goes inside. Remember that internal surveillance equipment I gave you? I told yeah. you to put it in your house? The next shot that you're gonna see is from that camera equipment, okay? They go inside the house, grab two glasses of wine, and sit on your couch. That's when we see them conversing back and forth. Brittany sets her wine glass down, and then she receives a phone call. Tell me if you remember this. Hey, darling. Oh, hey, baby. How are you? I am okay. Uh, one of the girls called in to work tonight. So I'm going to have to stay late. Okay. Um, was there nobody else I could cover? You know, I've been trying to get a hold of a couple of the other waitresses, but they're so after hanging up the phone with you, the gentleman comes back from smoking a cigarette and sits back down on the couch. That's when we see them get very romantic. They start to kiss a lot. <laughs> She's look at that. I can't even look at that. I know you don't want to see this. She's going to try to deny this, I'm sure. Oh yeah, I'm sure she will. After they get on the couch, that's when she proceeds to take his shirt off, things get a little bit more heated up, and they go to the bedroom. That's absolutely disgusting. In your house. In my house, <laughs> on our couch, and then in our bed. Why don't we get in the vans, get on the road, they're at a warehouse actually practicing together right now, and we can bust them together. Are you ready to go confront Brittany? Let's go. Right this way, please. I'm Clark Gable with Cheaters, and the only reason why I'm here is because oh that girl is actually together with me. They've been together for two and a half years, and they live together. Who are these people? What is this? These are the people who gave me the information that I needed to confirm what I suspected. Oh, to you are and to you're you're me stalking? with this. Stalking? Are you kidding me? I stalking? can't believe you. Stalking? Yeah, are you you're my me? girlfriend. I mean, what did she tell you exactly? She, I mean, she didn't tell me anything. We're just dating. You, you guys have just been dating? How long has this been going on for? A couple months. And what was your name? 
My name's Cole. Cole, I'm Clark Abel. Cheers, man. I apologize for busting in, but I'm just yeah, no, I mean, quiet. but you guys gotta go, man. You guys can't no, you be here. You guys can't be doing this. No. You're just mad because oh, now I know for sure. There's no way. There's yeah. nothing that they could possibly yeah. had. Oh, oh, that's been hilarious. Doing oh my I can't. No, this is this is what? disgusting. And now what? what? You're gonna going walk on? away? Coming up, the conclusion. They're in a warehouse actually practicing together right now. Cheating on me with him? What is going on I'm here? I'm her girlfriend. This is Kitty, and we don't even worry about it. Brittany, what? No. Brittany, can I just talk to you for one second? That's not just Kitty. That's your girlfriend of two and a half years, correct? Yeah. And you guys have lived together for how long? About a year. And why wouldn't you just be honest with Cole here and tell him Who? the truth? Don't come think over here. You don't are you talk smashing to people's oh guitars. Are you kidding me? So, oh my God. Push me. Are you kidding me? Cole, Cole, it's not worth it. Get out of here now! Get the out! I'm sick of this! I'm done! Cole, it's, it's, not, it's not worth it. Relax, 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 relax. Kitty, 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 kitty. Relax. Relax, relax. Listen, listen, listen. Did you have any, did you have any idea? Did you have any idea? No, Can't be smashing people's guitars? Can't be smashing people's guitars? You know something about smashing guitars? Huh? Oh my god, this is Kitty, I know you're. I know you're pissed off right now. I know you're. I know you're pissed oh, off right now. Oh, I know you're pissed. What are you off. doing? You're crazy! Oh my god! Oh my god! Stop! Stop! That's his guitar. His, that's that's definitely his guitar. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? You want to destroy things? What the f is your problem? We'll get you destroy to things. Look who's talking, homewrecker! I don't know who the f you are. Get out of my face! Stop! Was this Stop. Worth, is this worth it to you? Stop. Is this worth it to you? Stop. 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 Pull them apart, pull them apart. Watch the glass, watch the love. It's okay, it's okay, relax, 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 relax. He completely was not aware that you I don't know who you were are. her girlfriend. She did not tell him anything. You've got some anger issues. I need to talk to you. It's not. Oh, so you're lying to both of us. You don't understand. Huh? You guys take a kicks? You've never been supportive of me. You've always invaded my privacy. What did you expect? I've never been supportive of you again. Except when you're choking all the bills. force out of me? I don't oh. think so. Yeah, you kind of came in here on level 10. You poor thing. She's got no support for what I want to do with my life. Y'all need to get the out of here right now. For the right guitar now. teacher that you are sleeping with. Get the are you kidding me? Get out of here. You do not belong here. You need to leave. You need to get out of my house. You need to get out. Get my out of your house? Yeah, I don't think so, bitch. I'm changing the locks. It doesn't work like that when my name's like damn, it's on the damn lease. It's on the damn papers. Fine. You know what? Have fun with the house. I will. Enjoy um, being miserable and sucking the absolute life out of everybody you ever touch. Watch out. Watch out. You stay away. Huh? I need to talk. <laughs> what do you want to do right now at this point in time? He had no idea that you were her girlfriend. You know what? That's even worse to me. She's lying to two different people. Why do you? It doesn't matter. That's my past. It's I have I have baggage. Obviously it's, not that far past. It's it's complicated. Okay, I was taken off guard with you. I didn't know what to do. I understand. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. So did you f him? Yeah. Did you f him? I did. And I bet. Oh yeah. All over it, sweetheart. You dirty whore. Please. Please. Just so you know, he's replaceable. 19.99. You oh, I'm replaceable. Yeah, I'm replaceable. Absolutely replaceable. Free shipping and everything, darling. You don't know anything about me. You have no, you, what's my name? You think I give it? What the f does that matter? I'm done. Keeper. You want to play with trash cans? No. Oh! God, cold. Let's step outside, what? let's step outside, away from all the broken glass. I think we've made enough of a mess of this place. I'm sorry, Cole. Yeah, please, yeah, everyone yeah. just leave. 
get that crazy girl out of here. It should have never come to this point. I should never have betrayed you the way that I have. You're... We've just... I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I would do this to you, do this to anybody, especially you. you know, it's what the f is this? Get back. Relax, relax, get back. relax, 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 relax. relax. You're crazy. Forget it. Just get out of here. Get your crazy off. people and get out of here. I'm done. Go. Get the f out. Go. After the confrontation, Kitty comes to grips with the fact that her girlfriend enjoys dating men. At the end of the show, Cheaters discusses how she copes. But for now, please welcome to Cheaters the late Annette Riley, who sadly lost her battle with cancer. Annette gives more insight into the day she discovered her husband with another woman on Cheaters. When I first viewed the footage of Patrick and this other woman, it was like it was unreal, like maybe there was a good excuse as to why he was with this person. And um, I was just hoping that it wasn't something that had developed into more than a friendship. But once I got to the pharmacy and I saw them together as a couple, and I saw the prescription that they were getting for his erectile dysfunction, it just brought it all clear to me that he was going to have an affair with her had I not caught him. What in the hell are you doing? Uh, waiting on your prescriptions. Oh, really? And who is this? She's a friend of mine. A friend. a friend. Yeah. A friend goes with you to pick up my prescriptions. Yeah. Do you even know about me? I have no idea who you are. This is his wife of 19 years. Yeah. You can't see his wedding ring? Um, what was shocking to me was his whole attitude. It was like, he was trying to turn it around on me that uh, I had given him permission to go be with someone else and told her that too. And it was just beyond me that he, number one, was cheating on me, but when I catch him, he's trying to lie his way out of it right in front of me. I thought it was really selfish of him to think that he could get away with telling another woman that it's okay to cheat on me. I don't know you, and you're not getting in my vehicle. Oh, no. This is my husband, and I don't care where you go right now, but this you got to go. This is not her fault. No, it's your fault. You're right, but and I And so to you explain home. to your girlfriend why you can't take her home, because you're not going anywhere. You're going to stay with me. Come on, you're going to explain this. Oh, so really? You really home. think that y'all are going to go home. somewhere? Really? I'll take her home. To Excuse me? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's true to say. You hear me? Well, now that Patrick has moved out of the house and I've had time to really think about things and focus on getting well, which I am now in remission, I'm writing a lot of music and doing a lot more gigs. I have more time to focus on my band, and I had put that on the back burner, uh, first of all with my health, but also before my uh, cancer, you know, Patrick had kind of put a damper on where my band was going and traveling and things like that. So I feel like I have a better future now without him because I can work on my dreams and accomplish my music. Following the confrontation, Kitty Ramsey decides to move the suspect out of her house. Kitty takes cheaters up on the offer of therapy in her attempt to cope. According to Brittany Foster, it is Kitty's fault for wrecking their relationship. She claims Kitty never truly allowed her to express herself. Foster admits she still sees her companion and that he's asked her to move in. When approached by Cheater's producers, Cole admits it thrills him to have a woman who dates with other women. Cole says, what man wouldn't want a girl who's bi? I'm Clark Gable. And this is Cheaters. There are times where we may get into it or it may be something small as 
I wanted a piece of gum and he didn't give it to me to where he would get so mad to where he wouldn't speak with me for a weekend, for a whole weekend. And at first, I didn't think anything of it, but after so long, I'm, I, it, it just started getting suspicious where it would seem Thursday, we're okay, and then come Friday, there's some reason to be mad, and then you go the whole weekend without speaking to me. So we go to, to the same church on Sundays. So Sundays, it's usually, you know, Sunday morning, I don't hear anything. Sunday, get to church, I'm there, I don't say anything. And then midway through service, I may get a message saying I look nice or, hey, how was my weekend? And he comes back and he, and he just starts talking to me like nothing happened, like we didn't just not talk the whole weekend. Jay Talley, age 24, a website moderator accused of modifying his relationship by uploading with another woman. Cheaters headquarters dispatches a unit to follow the suspect from his residence. Tally arrives at an apartment complex and enters one of the buildings. Tally emerges from the apartment with a young, unknown female. The two get into the suspect's car. I questioned him about a, a name in a text message that I've seen. I, there's recently, I've seen the name Anthony pop up, and I know generally all of the people that he associates with. And Anthony is all through the call logs, all through messages. I haven't actually seen the messages, but there's this new name, Anthony. So when I questioned him about the name Anthony, he immediately, you know, made it into a big deal. We didn't speak. So it's really hard. I most of the time try to find my friends, see what they're doing to, to find things to do to keep myself occupied so I'm not thinking about it because literally I sit at home if I don't have anything to do and I'm, and I'm going through my head you know, trying to figure out what went wrong. What did I do? The cheater's mobile unit follows Tally and his charge across town. The suspect stops at a convenience store to fill up his tank. The pair then get back on the road, covertly tailed by the cheater's team. Tally drives to a supermarket. He pulls up in front of the store and lets his paramour out. The young lady leans into the driver's side of the window to give Tally a kiss. After a moment, the suspect hits the road. If my suspicions are true, six years, it's just time that has been wasted for him, for myself. If he wanted to be with somebody, he could have just let me know. So if my, if my suspicions are, are true, I, I mean, I feel, I feel sorry for him. I will probably lose it. And, and when I say I, I'm going to lose it, I will probably do something I'm going to regret later. Cheaters operatives stake out Tally's residence. Tally comes out, hops into his car, and takes a short drive to the same super center he visited the day before. However, this time, the suspect picks up the woman he dropped off earlier. The woman, now identified as Ashley Simon, gets into his vehicle. The suspect and his date head down the road to a nearby roller rink. The pair enter the rink, don skates, and roll around the rink. After some time, the rolling couple remove the wheels from their feet. Tally and his skater girl go back to his car. The suspect then drives the young lady home. Carrying Simon's bag, Tally joins her inside. A while later, the suspect leaves the companion's residence and returns home for the night. As with previous days, Cheater's agents continue with the stakeout of Tally's residence. Sometime during the day, cheater spotters mark their target leaving his residence. Tally drives the now familiar route to his favorite shopping center. The suspect pulls into the lot and waits a few minutes. Simon shortly emerges from the building. The young lady climbs into the suspect's car and the two drive away. Unaware of the cheater's team on their tail, the pair arrive at a bar and grill. It appears as though the two of them have some sort of disagreement with Tally gesticulating derisively. However, once at their table, Simon seems to make up with her man. The suspect receives a kiss from his date. Sometime later, Tally and Simon leave the restaurant. A friendly tap on the behind signifies Tally's affection for Simon. Cheaters agents follow the suspect's car back to the supercenter. 
Then Tally drops Simon off. And as the suspect leaves, Cheater's agents prepare to collate all evidence for Harmony. Coming up, the confrontation. Having documented all deceitful actions of the suspect, Cheaters calls on Harmony to unveil the evidence. Abound with questions, Harmony comes forth to receive her answers. Well, as you know, Harmony, you have conducted our investigation. And my question for you is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? I think so. OK. On this day of our investigation, Harmony, we are outside of Jay's residence. A few moments later, Jay emerges, he walks over to his car, and he gets inside. As our detectives follow Jay, he drives some distance, and he arrives at a supermarket. A short time later, that female walks out, gets into the vehicle, and leaves with Jay. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at a roller skating rink. They go inside together. Internal surveillance shows the two of them skating, enjoying each other. After they take their skates off, Jay puts his shoes on, fixes his hat, and they walk out to the vehicle. That's when we see the two of them get inside, and they arrive at this unknown residence. We see the female get out. He hands Jay her backpack. He carries it for her. And a while later, he emerges from the apartment on his cell phone. He gets into his vehicle, and he leaves. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of Jay's residence. A short time later, Jay nonchalantly strolls out of his house, walks over to his vehicle, and he gets inside. As our detectives follow Jay, he drives for some distance, and once again, he arrives at that super center from the previous day. We see that female, she walks over to the passenger side, and she gets into the vehicle. They leave the super center parking lot. As our detectives follow, they arrive at a bar. That's when we see them park the vehicle. They both get out, and they walk inside together. That's when we see the two of them conversing back and forth. They sit out on the patio, and Jay is drinking a beer, and that's when they lean in for a kiss. Now, Harmony, during this time, he gets a phone call. He steps away from the table. What you're about to hear is the audio from that. Tell me if you can remember this day. Hello? Hey, what you doing? Um, uh, right now I'm at the studio at the moment. How long are you going to be there? Probably about another hour or so. I was just trying to make sure that we're still on for this evening. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really for sure because I'm supposed to see my mom today, so. Hey. But if I have time, I, I, I will definitely let you know. I'll Come shoot on. you a text. You can't cancel on me like you did. Come on now. Time. Come on now. I'm, I'm, I'm working. I'm working. Okay, we'll but just I'm going to try my best. Okay, call me when you get through. All right. Bye. Bye. Finishing up the phone call with you after lying to you, saying he was at the studio, he walks back outside, closes out his tab, and him and that female walk out together holding hands. Before they walk over to Jay's vehicle, he slaps her on her lower behind, and they leave. As our detectives follow, he returns her to the same super center where he picked her up. Jay then returns home for the evening. Harmony, you know what you've seen. My question is, are you ready to confront Jay? I'm ready. All right, listen, they are at a snow cone shop. He picked her up from the super center. They went there. If we get in the vans right now, we can go confront them. Yes, let's go. All right, right this way, please. Right there, the sunglasses on, right there. What is going on? What the f is going on? What the f is going on here? Why are you here? Who is, who is this? Who is this? What the f Wait, who are you? Don't touch me. What is she Don't doing here? Don't touch me. Why, why is she here with you? This is my girl. Yeah, okay. You're, oh, this Come is on, your girl? Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Oh, this is like, your girl? Let's go. Don't yeah. touch Look me. at me when I'm talking to you. Don't touch me. This is your girl? This is your girl? This is your girl? Then you tripping. You tripping. Don't, don't be. Right now, right now. Chill, chill, chill. Break it up, break it up, break it up. You don't even know me. You don't even know me. Chill, 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 chill. Let's go over here, chill. No, let me chill. go. Let me yeah, go. Come on, let's go. What? What? Ain't nobody scared of you? What? That's the chill. Come, come on. on. Go over there, chill. Come on. Jay. I have a question, man. Can really, I talk to you Jay? for a second? Really, Jay? Six why are you years? worried about it? Go on, Six who years? are you? Because it's my job, that's Six why I'm worried years? about it. Jay? 
six years and this is how it's gonna end Two with some hoe? She look like she's 15. She, no. no. she, she look like she's 15 years old. Coming up next, the conclusion. Right there, the sunglasses on. What the f is going on? This is my girl. Yeah. yeah watch out, chill, 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 She look like she's 15. She's 15. No. She fix, she look like she's 15 years old. Yes. Who Ashley, are you? I'm no, Clark Gable no, with Cheaters. Okay, I apologize. I don't know I'm not who here you are. to offend you. I'm just here to ask you a couple questions. I understand, but did you're you know, ruining things. Did you know that this man had a girlfriend for six years? No. She's a hoe, so she wouldn't know. She don't oh, care. Okay, but that's the kind of stuff she do. That's the kind of stuff she doing. Whatever. Whatever, you're mad. But Don't he be mad never, at me. But he, he never told you that? No. Never at all? No. Because she's not relevant. She's not important. Oh, I'm relevant. She's a her. side chick. But he's sleeping with me, though. You're mad. You're mad because he's Chill. sleeping with me. So touch him. Ashley, what? did you guys go? Is this you guys? Yeah, that's me. What's your point? My point is, why? If you had no idea this guy had a girlfriend and you just found this out, why would you still want to even be Because I love him and I'm pregnant with his child. That's why. You're pregnant with his yes, child? Yes, I'm pregnant. I'm two months. What's your point? Us She's three. She's pregnant. Us two months three. pregnant. Jay, six, six years? Us three. And this is the kind of that you do to me? Us three. We can chill together. Really? Are you serious? Are you serious, right? Oh, chill, why don't we chill? Hey, Jay, Jay, come over Whatever, here. Whatever, I'm the side here. chick, but you don't come have no here. baby. Stay in the side chick's position. Okay, okay, obviously you're the side chick. You had to hire them. Six years. You're the side chick. Jay, what happened, man? What why you did mean, you do what you mean, man? Why did you do this? Like, how come you wouldn't tell her that you have a significant other? Come on, let's go. Or tell like, her this is all that you have a girlfriend? No, let's go. You're not, you're not, not important. Why don't, why don't, don't you touch me? me? You're not don't important. Don't touch me. I don't care if you're pregnant don't or not. Don't touch me. You will lose that baby okay, today. Okay, pregnant right, or not, right. we'll still beat day. your ass. Well, do you guys know about this? Do you remember taking her roller skating? I got you guys, she you know, did. picking you up at work. Is that where you work? And yeah. was fine with me. Well, she hired us, man, because you wouldn't tell because her the truth. Because you're a liar. You're a liar. You're caught. I'm not, I'm not lying. I love, I, love, I want both of y'all. Come on. You're a liar. I'm you not want lying. what? I want both. You want both? I, I, want, I want both. But this is you the dude both? that you want to be with. You want both? I want both. Are you serious? This is the dude you that you want to be with. <laughs> Baby, are you serious? This is the dude that you want to be with. You want two? You want two, girl? That's the best way. That's the best Jenny. way. Jay, I gotta ask you a Jay, question, I'm gonna do you a favor. You can keep that hoe. You can keep her. You can keep her. I want both. I want both. Jay. No. You lost the Harmony, opportunity. You, know, you, know you can you. keep her. We got, we got chemistry. Six years. You, know you wasted my we time. Got chemistry. Six what? years, you Jay. Know we got chemistry no, it's no both. It's no both. It's one or the other. I'm gonna make it easier for you. You can Get keep the better chick. You guys can have each other. No, 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 no. How does that make you feel? My business, your concern. Because I'm doing my job okay, for that person right you. behind you who's this his is, girlfriend of six me, years. Excuse me, sir. Trifling. Off? Let's both go home. You want to walk No, off? there is no both. I've made it very clear. You can keep her and you can keep that little that little baby that she got growing in her stomach. Little baby. baby. Both. I don't his baby. Want, I don't want none. You're right. I want and both. how many other babies? How many other women does he um, have? Pregnant? I don't know. You, you don't know because you're six years in, bitch. You're you're bitch. You should be the one really concerned about it. And I'm so happy that I don't. And I'm so happy that I don't. And that's why you're this exact same reason. And that's why you're hiring For this exact same reason. No family. For this exact same reason. No family. Family. No, no. Family. I don't know this. Uh, whatever the hell don't she touch is. Me. Harmony. No, Harmony. You too. I mean, what's up? No, no. What's it's only facing opportunity. I told you. I told you it's nothing. It's I'm nothing. Not, I'm not worried about you. Oh, I no. bet you're not worried about you. I'm not worried about you. Is. So right. what? The one that's cheating on you. Oh, right. You're pregnant by a man no, that's actually, cheating. He's cheating on he's you. Cheating he on you. you before. Right. 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 If your child saw this, don't how do you think you would feel, Ashley? Me. That what? she's immature and she's a child. How would you feel if your child knew she's that this ghetto. is the way that she was brought into the world? Well, I don't by know. cheating men. I don't know. I, I never had sex. It's never had sex. She probably swallowed my babies. But... Oh. I never had security. He's a liar. And th again, this is the man that you want to have a baby with. This is the man that you're with. No, the same I, one who won't admit that he might be. Right, so it says a lot about you. Now. He can't even admit that he's Hey, guys, with. let's go. Everybody out. Y'all are fighting on my property. Let's I want y'all gone. Let's go. Whatever. Let's I'm done. Let's I'm done. The There's no baby. Party. I'm done. Give me the keys. If you don't want to drive off, I'll drive off in your Give me the keys. Give me the keys. I don't have the keys. I lost the I just keys. saw you put them in your pocket. Give me the keys. keys. And you're still over oh, here? Oh, you're mad? You're still oh, mad? Over here. Oh. Yeah, I'm over here. So what's no, up? You're still what's, over yeah, here? Yeah, get your 
Go get in the get, car. Get, Jay, step back for a minute. Move step away. back. Move away. Get. Come, you relax. You better relax. be glad, bitch. You, I'll wipe no, around you with you. I will wipe You're around a mother. with you. You're be a mother. Serious. Remember that. You're a mother. Okay. Ooh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Don't Listen, touch hey, me. Lay your hands me. off your girl, tie dye man. What are you doing? Don't go touch me. Part. Give me the keys. Let's go. Okay. Go ahead and keep her. After the confrontation, the ramifications of her decision set in for Harmony. At the end of the show, Cheaters updates you on how she handles her newly found situation. But next, Derek Erickson bowled straight gutter balls on the day he was entangled with another woman. So when April busted in with the private investigators, all the cameras were in our face. Um, it, you know, it was, it was very surprising, but um, is extremely embarrassing. You know, there, we were in public. Um, I never expected this to happen. By the time I realized what was going on, all the pieces had already crumbled. Everyone had already had their feelings hurt. You know, I just decided to, you know, get Susan and, and get out there as quickly as possible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bitch. Oh, yeah. So the affair with uh, Susan was, you know, it, it was just a mutual attraction. You know, you see people all the time and you never act on it, but whenever you're living with someone, you know, she's walking around the apartment in, you know, her underwear basically, and, uh, you know, we end up having a lot of alone time. That mutual attraction eventually gets acted upon. Uh, didn't know how to break it off with April, but. Uh, you know, she's a good girl, you know, I, I truly loved her, but I just didn't know what, uh, what I should do. You're a good girl, I never want to break your heart. I never break your heart. Look, look, I promise. With my best friend. I promise. With my best friend. Look, she was, look, she spent two years with us. You could have picked two any years. other girl. I could have. Any other girl. It was not my choice, my this just happened. It just happened. It's not my choice, I promise. I didn't want this to happen. I want us to fall in love and stay in love forever, but it just didn't happen that way. So the one thing that I really regret about this whole situation is hurting April. Uh, she's a great girl, and I really do love her to this day. You know, she's hopefully always going to be one of my good friends, and uh, knowing that I really hurt her um, and everything happened the way that it did, I... I have a lot of remorse and regret from that. Um, hopefully, you know, she'll forgive me and, you know, eventually we can uh, be friends. Following the disturbing revelation that her boyfriend has another girlfriend, Harmony Vance concludes that she needs to cut all ties with her former lover. The suspect, Jay Talley, admits to cheaters he still wants Harmony in his life. Despite the likelihood of a reunion remaining slim, Talley figures he still has a chance. The suspect's companion, Ashley Simon, only states one thing to cheaters' producers. That other chick, she says, is not relevant. to Cheaters for answers to her disquieting questions. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. There's been absolutely no sex, no affection whatsoever. And I used to could get on a cell phone to Google because I don't have a smartphone, and I'm not even allowed to Google on a cell phone anymore. He just yanks it out of my hand, or he does whatever he's gonna do to it and then hands it back to me. There's no privacy. If I'm gonna give my life to you, then where's the why do we need privacy? 
David, age 41, a cattle salesman suspected of corralling another girlfriend. Upon getting the call from headquarters, cheaters agents assemble at the suspect's cattle ranch and set up for a stakeout. After a while, an unknown vehicle wheels up the dirt road leading into the ranch. An unknown female gets out of the SUV and greets the suspect with an enthusiastic hug. A few moments later, the pair get into David's car and take off. Well, within the last two years, his grandfather had gotten really sick and he took over um, a ranch of his grandfather's. And so he was going back and forth, but when he was not at the ranch, he was with me and pretty much moved everything of his stuff in because he wanted to be there with me. He used to want me to go to the ranch with him every single time we went, and now all of a sudden it's, oh, I don't need you, babe. Oh, I got it. You need to stay home and rest. And I don't need to rest. I'm, I'm active. I get outside and do things. I just don't understand why he would do this to me. And so I need you guys' help to figure out where is he going? Is he going to the ranch by himself? Is he not going to the ranch? The ranch should be our number one priority. The suspect stops the car further into the ranch property. David and his date get out, and the mystery woman spins around and places her cowboy hat on the suspect's head. The couple walk toward a fence. The unfaithful cowpoke kisses his paramour passionately. The young lady hangs on to David as he leads her around the fence. The suspect takes a moment to feed a cow before leading his buckaroo to a place where they can sit down and make out. After a long kissing session, David puts his lady friend back into his car and they drive back to her SUV. The two spend a few more minutes lustfully saying goodbye, and after one last kiss, the sexy cowgirl drives away, leaving David to his work. If he is cheating on me, then he has ruined everything I ever believed about in love because he was my Prince Charming, and I just can't imagine the thought of some other woman touching him or him touching some other woman. Why give me this? Why? If you're just gonna do it. Cheaters' detectives keep vigil over the suspect's ranch. After a while, the same woman from previous surveillance pulls into the ranch entrance. A hot cowgirl, now identified only as Kayla, gets into the suspect's car and they head into town. David and Kayla stop at a grocery store to grab some supplies. The pit stop only takes a few moments. David gets in and drives away. Followed covertly by cheaters' investigators, the suspect drives his date back to the ranch. David and Kayla get out and find a quiet, shady spot to relax. One thing leads to another, and soon the lusty couple begin kissing and fondling each other. Knowing he still has plenty of work to do, the suspect escorts his mistress back to her suburban. More kissing occurs. Finally, Kayla gets into her vehicle and David gives away one last kiss. Kayla leaves the ranch, ending this day of surveillance. Cheaters operatives continue the stakeout of the ranch. And as usual, by midday, Kayla comes a-calling. The cowgirl gets an escort by a ranch hand to where David works with a forklift. Kayla mounts up. The suspect greets his companion with a kiss. The two take a ride on the forklift. Reaching their destination, David and guest get out, and the suspect gives his honey a long kiss. After which, the couple check on the cows. And after a while, they drive the forklift back to their parked cars. David kisses Kayla. After a few minutes, with his arm wrapped around her waist, the gentleman puts his new lady into her vehicle. One final kiss signals the finish for the philanderer. As the companion leaves, cheaters herds up all evidence for a distressed errand. Coming up, the confrontation. Gleaning confirmation of the suspect's deceit 
Cheaters arranges a meeting with Aaron to expose her fiance's lies. With fear building at the prospect of bad news, Aaron steps forward to view the truth. Aaron, thank you for coming out today. I understand that we had to pull you away from some stuff, but uh, you know why you're here. We have conducted our investigation. We have come up with some findings. My question for you is, Aaron, are you prepared to see what we've come up with? Yes. All right. So, Aaron, we begin our investigation at this ranch. That's when we see this SUV pull up, and this woman gets out. It's hard to see because we're far away, but do you recognize her at all, her hair color, her vehicle, anything? No. Never seen her in your life? No. Okay. Continuing our investigation, they get into his vehicle together, and a while later, they arrive at this store. Well, they walk into the store together, and then while he's in that store, David receives a phone call, Aaron. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you recall this day. So after completely lying to you, he finishes up that phone call. Listen, I'm really, really sorry, and I know this is hard to watch, Aaron, okay? But this woman comes out with some groceries, she gets inside, and they leave together. So they return to the ranch after the grocery store. They get out of the vehicle, they go and sit in front of the house, and begin to kiss. After finishing up the kissing in front of the door, he escorts her back over to her vehicle, leans in for a very long kiss, and the female leaves the ranch. And his grandfather's sick and has no clue, and he's been in my life for, you know, over three years. And he has no clue what his grandson's doing to me. Well, after today, I'll tell you this much, Aaron is, he's going to have a clue. He's gonna know exactly what's been going on with his grandson at his ranch. On this day of our investigation, we are outside of the ranch. A while later, that same SUV pulls in and parks. That's when we see that woman walking over to David when he's sitting in that tractor. Are you kidding me? She gets in the tractor with him, and he drives with a hay bale over to the bullpen. He totally did that with me. He's doing things with you, with this woman. Exactly the same. Okay, well, after finishing up their little ride in the tractor, drive over back towards the vehicles, and they get out of the tractor, and they embrace with a very long kiss. That's when we see David escort this woman back over to her SUV, leans in for a very long kiss, and she leaves the ranch. I am just, I'm devastated. I can't believe somebody would buy somebody a $4,000 engagement ring, take them to Niagara Falls, do all the things that he's done for me just to find somebody else in three short years. I mean, why? So at this point in time, I think you've seen enough, Aaron. I understand you're upset, you're pissed off. So what I wanna do is, why don't we go ahead and get in the vans, get on the road? I'm ready, look, I'm so pissed off. I don't even know what, what the f I'm gonna say to any of them. I'm all just right. too pissed. Let's go. How you doing, Gomez? Hey, Clark, how's it going? It's going, man. Good, Where good. is she? All right, we're gonna walk this way, right around the corner from these little R RVs right here. So if we're quiet enough, how close can we get before they know we're right on them? Probably about 50 feet. Okay, that's but, fine. But they're upstairs and, and part of this little bugging thing they got going on over there. Okay. Upstairs okay. of what? Well, let's find out. All right, let's go. When we get closer, let's try to be quiet so we can really surprise them, you know? Coming up, the conclusion. They're upstairs and part of this little bucking thing they got going on over there. Let's do this. She doesn't know the wrath of me. You mother What the are you doing here? What the is that? Who is it? Who is it? 
you see? Caesar. One of your little ranch hoes. Okay. What's your name? Oh, is hey. she helping? Hey. Yeah. I'm Clark Gable really? with Cheaters. She's helping. It's nice to meet nice. you. Do you know this is his wife? What is all this crap? Apparently the no. cheater, right? Get out of my face. I'm no Get one. Get out of my face! No one. Get my wife! Hey, Listen David. Listen to me. David. Listen to me. Tell me who the she is and why you're here with her. Do you know who I am? Nope, nope. Yeah, I'm his fiance. Yeah, me too. Oh, really? $4,000 and you're going to go a ranch hand? No. You bought her a $4,000 ring too? So you're never home. Oh, really? I'm never home because I'm helping your ass all the time. Or no. going to school full time so I can learn how to take care of a ranch. No, you're always at the work. I'm all, okay. Whatever. David, what happened, man? I mean, this is a, obviously a very. Who the hell are you, man? I'm Clark Gable with Cheaters and I'm here. Your fiance, some aunt. Ridiculous. No, this is getting yeah, right. Yeah. It's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, because I'm here most of the time. Where are you? Let's, Not let's here. Go down, let's because go down obviously you're this. here, bitch. Well, good. Maybe you should take care of your man and then you wouldn't have to worry about it. Are you kidding me? He's no. well taken care of, bitch. I can see that just now. Yeah. Yeah. David, talk to me for a minute. Listen, what happened? Man. I got, I got, I got surveillance of you bringing her out here to your your grandfather's ranch. Because I understand. Who the fuck you out here? Your fiance did. She called us because she was worried about you because you've been distant. You haven't been bringing her out here or anything to help you feed or anything like that. So she called us, and that's the only reason why we're here. His dying grandfather wanted me to help him take care of this ranch, not you, You're me. Right. I don't want to take care of this ranch. Then get the out of here. Go Why out of your Fine. See ya. See ya, bitch. I'm the. Yep, you heard me. Well, looks how dedicated you are to your man who bought you a ring. Yeah. Because well. I love this ranch and I love that old man and I love David. Well, we see how well he's working out for you, we don't you? You got you got a girl that you have been with for three years. You live with you. You bring her out to your grandfather's ranch. Who, from what I understand, your grandfather is a little ill right now. And this seems like a very special place. Do you think you owe an explanation? I don't owe you nothing, man. Not me. You don't know my grandfather. You love me or her? Me or her? I love you. Do you? Yes. Then why the f did you get her? It's okay. Can I? When did he buy you this ring? Not too long ago. Not too long ago? Nope. And what were his uh, intentions behind that ring? Well, I thought they were to follow through, but apparently he's got a little bit other things on his mind, huh? Did he ever tell you that he had a significant other that he lived with and shared three years of his life with? I wouldn't have been here if he did. Thank you. Your grandfather is dying, and he begged me and you, David, in the hospital to take care of him, and you did this to me. And the only reason why I'm still standing here is because I love you and I love your grandfather. But I am pissed. I'm so pissed. After everything that we've said to each other, everything we've done here, that's who you're going home with. And all honesty, I don't think you should go home with either of us. But that's just my personal opinion. I apologize to you. But apparently, How you don't know how to keep your in your pants. And I'm done with it. Exactly, because obviously he keeps schedules separate, and that's something we're going to have to been, discuss. He hasn't been letting her come out here. Why don't you go after your man? He's running away. Yeah, he'll come back. He always does. I want to beat your ass, but because you didn't know, it's just keeping me from doing it. Just say so you know. Get off. Keep in the Get ring. Off. and done with you. You understand? Fine. Get off my ranch. It's getting sold, and I want all of my back, and you're not getting your back. You can keep it. Good, I'll keep it. Get the up. Go. You touch me. I swear to God. Stay the hell away from me. Let me tell you what, bitch. <laughs> Hold on. Don't with me. I swear to God, I will knock the out of you. Why are we even fighting over him? Why? I asked you the same thing that I probably heard him say the same words to me that he has said to you. Do the other way. What if I didn't know about you and I caught you two together? I didn't know how long. I'm no, sorry. You didn't. Because I didn't know about you. So you're doing it to the wrong person. You know what? I changed my mind. It. Let's leave. I'm good. Alright, let's go. You can keep your ring, David. Following the confrontation, 
Erin finds herself at odds between her disgust of the suspect's actions and her love for her fiance. At the end of the episode, Cheaters fills you in on her final decision. But next, Tom LeBlanc discusses what life has been like since he lost his girlfriend on Cheaters. Well, the day of the confrontation, when I found out Taylor was, of course, cheating on me, and I was crushed. You know, when um, I was looking at the footage, I was just like, in disbelief. I couldn't even believe that this was happening. Like, I was at a loss for words. All I could do was just be emotional, and that's, I just felt a heartache, because it's like, I spent two years, she kind of came into my life and rearranged and changed it all for the positive. And then in the blink of an eye, she just didn't care. She just did the dirt and was with old buddy. I don't even know the name, but it was like, why? For what? Come on! Man, who the Who are you, bro? What's up, What's up? What's up? What's up? It took me about four months to really get over this uh, situation because she really did, you know, play a part in helping me and influence me positively. And at about that four month mark, I was just like, man, I can't keep being pouty faced and sad all the time. So. I went out, started meeting people, started meeting the females and stuff. And so now I just talk, talk with females and I'm not even rushing anything. We having fun, doing our thing, so. Look, how long have I been trying to get pregnant? I haven't been, okay? And once I have, and I lost it, I realized like, So you wanna mess with him? Huh? You wanna mess him before he was pregnant? Before we thought we was pregnant? I was. It, I knew it was yours. So you, it was yours. It could not have been It was mine. yours. It was yours, but I mean. Come on, baby. Let's go. He sees cameras on my face, man. Do you have anything else to say? He sees cameras on my face. Go. Well, this whole situation allowed me to grow in a tremendous amount. I mean, I know it hurt, but at the end of the day, it just let me know that I need to keep my guard up with people. I mean, not, not be not be to the fact that I'm not open to love, but also be mindful of the fact that you have to figure out who people are before you date them. You have to figure out what are their motives, what are they into, what what are their goals and their morals and ethics and different things. And you have to use that, you know, and then give it time to manifest into something, not just rush into it. Following the confrontation, Erin Shields realizes that she has a tough road ahead of her. Taking the suspect back into her life despite the affair, Erin admits her love for him. Erin now accompanies the suspect to the ranch to assist him and keeps a close eye on him. In the end, the suspect David feels grateful that his fiance decided to take him back. David tells cheaters, I love her and I'd do anything for my girl. I just don't know what got into me. The suspect's companion, Kayla, would only state to cheaters that she had said everything she had to say during the confrontation. to help quell her suspicions. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, you know, I met Lamont at a nightclub, and we hit it off really strong, and it just seems like we were seeing each other every day. He, come to find out, he actually stayed about three to four blocks away from me, so it was like every day we were seeing each other, texting, talking to each other on the phone, just spending a lot of time going to the park and, you know, just enjoying each other's company. Now it's like he started working as a delivery guy and he moved to Uptown. He just don't have time for me. And I just, I feel like it's something going on. Lamont, age 27, a delivery driver accused of delivering his love to another woman. Cheater's detective set up a perimeter around the suspect's residence. 
After a while, Loman emerges and walks a short way to a nearby restaurant where he greets an unknown woman. The two grab a table. Cheaters investigators watch the innocence dissolve. The suspect kisses his mystery lunch date. Sometime later, Lamont and his pretty woman walk hand in hand down the avenue to her parked car. The number one thing that really hit the nail on the head was, you know, I got a really big promotion at work and we were both excited because it's like, okay, you know, things are finally working out for the both of us, not just for him, but for me also. So we decided, hey, you know, let's go out, let's celebrate, let's have a good time. And he was like, you know, hey, I'll be there at nine. And here it is, you know, 1040 and no call, no show or anything. So I call him and I'm like, hey, where are you at? You know, like, don't you remember we had a date? And he's like, oh, busy, something came up. You know, I have to actually go into work. I can't come see you. Uh, we'll have to reschedule it. And, you know, this is bullshit. I want to see you. I want to spend time with you. This is supposed to be our celebration. We're supposed to be happy together. Why would he hang up on me? Why would you not answer your phone? It's been like two or three days since I've talked to him, and I don't understand that. Like, we talk every day, and now he hung up. He's not answering, and I just feel like he's cheating on me with someone else. The pair frolic for a few minutes by the car, intimately saying goodnight. The young lady drives away as Lamont walks home, ending this evening's fun. Lamont basically started with nothing. So he went from staying with his mom to, you know, just chilling every day, not doing anything, just, you know, free as he wants to be. And I just feel like, you know, I'm sticking with you. I'm down for you, whatever you needed. I was helping you make sure you had it. And, you know, who's going to put up with that? Like, how are you going to start with me at the bottom? And then once you make it to the top with your new job and moving to Uptown, you don't have time for me. You don't. You don't have time to see me, spend time with me, talk to me, or text me. I'm just saying, if I catch Lamont cheating on me with someone else, another bitch, or whatever the case may be, me and him are gonna have a problem, and I just don't see myself being with him because you don't leave what you started with for something new because you feel like, oh, it's different. Cheater's agents post up outside the suspect's residence and wait for him to surface. Cheater's PIs tag along for the ride as Lamont drives away. The suspect arrives at his destination, where the woman from the previous day, now identified only as Asia, waits for him. Lamont and Asia drive to a restaurant. Crossing the lot, they hold hands. Inside the taco joint, the suspect and his goddess enjoy a nice meal. When finished, Lamont and Asia leave. The suspect drives his sweetheart back to her vehicle. Before she leaves, however, the suspect races back to his vehicle to retrieve an item Asia left in his car. Lamont teases the woman for a moment, then he kisses his companion. As the two leave the scene, Cheater's gumshoes wrap up the night of surveillance. As with previous days, investigators continue with the stakeout of Lamont's house. Soon the suspect makes his appearance. Lamont walks down the street to his rendezvous where Asia greets him with a hug. Lamont and Asia hold hands as they continue down the street to a nearby restaurant. The two lovers grab a table on the patio. An appetizer of kisses comes before the main course. Sometime later, having finished their meal, the suspect and his companion head back to Lamont's residence. After a few hours, the suspect and Asia materialize on the street. The pair hold hands as Lamont walks his paramour back to her parked vehicle. Upon arrival at the car, the suspect and the young lady share a few intimate kisses. Asia finally pulls away from Lamont's embrace. The suspect holds the door open for his girlfriend. And as Lamont closes the car door, Cheaters shuts the lid on the case. Coming up, The Confrontation. With no doubt about the suspect's indiscretion, Cheaters notifies Mimi about her boyfriend's unfaithful tendencies. Reluctant to let him get the best of her, Mimi conjures up the strength to view the findings. 
Mimi, I'd like to say thank you for coming out this evening. I understand you have a lot going on, so we'll just get right into this. All right, Mimi, well, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. My question for you is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? I don't know if I'm prepared, but I'm ready to, you know, see what's going on and finally have the truth. All right, fair enough. Mimi, on this day of our investigation, we are outside of Lamont's house. A few moments later, he arrives at a bar and greets this unknown female with a hug. They then kiss and share some drinks at this bar. So you're smiling. A while later, after finishing up the drinks at the bar, they walk across the street, holding hands, laughing, being rather playful. We see Lamont put his arm around her as they walk through his neighborhood. I can't believe this. This is really up. Like, are you serious? They arrive at the female's car and embrace the hug, a kiss, and being very playful. We see Lamont kissing her again. He opens her car door for her, and she gets inside. Continuing on with our investigation, Mimi, on this day, we are outside of Lamont's residence. A few moments later, we see Lamont emerge. He walks over to his vehicle, and he gets inside and leaves. As our detectives follow Lamont, he picks up the same woman from the previous day. She gets out of her vehicle, and she gets into his. You still don't recognize her? No. All right, Mimi, they drive for some time, and they arrive at a restaurant. As our detectives follow them, they park the vehicle and walk in together holding hands. This is the thanks I get, really? They go into this restaurant, and he receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call, Mimi. Tell me if you remember this. This is your business? Completely lying to you. Saying I love you. Exactly. And you just right. called him out too on his bluff. After finishing up the phone call, they get out of the restaurant and they leave together. They return to that woman's vehicle. He walks her over to her vehicle once again. But before she leaves, Lamont goes back over to his car and retrieves something, what looks to be a phone charger. You see, he dangles it in front of her face and then he gives it to her, along with a very, very long romantic kiss. They continue to kiss with her car door open. After she gets in the car, she leaves. He goes back home. Why don't we go ahead and get on the road? We're gonna give Detective Gomez a call and get a location on where Lamont is, and we'll go from there, all right? Okay, I'm ready. I want to know the truth. All right, right this way. All right. Okay. Just point him out. All right. Right there. See? Really? That's what this is? Are you serious? What you talking like, about? Like, you about you busy? You gotta work late? You don't have time for me? Man. Who the f is this? That's my homegirl. What you your mean, homegirl. man? Lamar, so you making here? time for your homegirl, but you can't make time girl. for me? You mean, but you said man. you love me and you care about me. What, the, what you mean, man? That's what my homegirl. We having a drink. You seen me do anything out of line? We sitting there at the table having a, a drink, drink, man. Really? Huh? But you said that you too tired. You don't have time are for me. Are you about to do for real? What's wrong with having a drink after work, man? A lot's wrong with having a drink after work. Make time for me. Make that drink happen with me, not her. Who the f is that? Man, this is just my homegirl. Yo, homegirl. Is this how you really drinks with your homegirl? Do you kiss all your homegirls? Man, I'm gonna slap you. Stop playing with me. <laughs> That's how you feel? That's exactly how I feel. You look like good you today. can't just really? Yeah, I look good today. Yeah, really? You look good today. How you gonna say I look good Excuse today? Me. But you with this? You with this hoe? Really? Good today. Excuse me. Okay, I'm really? Gonna go, man. You finna go? Yeah, yeah, Where I you going? Go, man. Coming up next, the conclusion. What this is? Who the f is this? That's my homegirl. What you Yo, mean, homegirl. Man, I'm gonna slap you. Stop playing with me. So, did he tell you that he's been with that girl for four years? No, like. You had no idea? What, what the f is going on? Like, I'm Clark Gable with the television show Cheaters. The reason why I'm here is because this woman over here has been with this man for four years. Man, Lamont, talk to me. Man, ain't nothing to talk about. What you mean it ain't nothing to talk about? 
bull. It's a lot to talk about. You up here lying to me, really? That's my home girl. You your home girl. Your home girl. Your home girl. Well, then talk to me then. I didn't know anything about a girlfriend. None of this. Like so, what? And what is your name? Asia? Yeah. All right, Asia. Well, I really appreciate that. And he told you he didn't have a girlfriend or anything? No. Like, what? What the f is going on? Like... Why don't you go ask him? He's going this way. Come on. How long have you guys been seeing each other? You said six months? Yeah, for like the past five to six months. I was supposed to be your girl. You all, that's just my whole friend and associate, man. But you're not even making time for man, me, but you're making time for your Get out of people that I'm going to talk about. You, you, you really thought I... Okay, what do you want to talk about? Come on. I want to talk about how you going to be up here with your homegirl when you don't even make time for me. Like, five-minute phone calls, text messages you don't even answer. Yeah. So, what is, what is this? What is going on? Home, man. man, you don't like, even need to worry about this. Go home, find you some business. This ain't got nothing to do like, with you. Lamar, what, ha what happened, man? I'm talking man? what are you this doing? What you mean? What you mean? Like, you right, babe, where the f*** this bae come from? Lamar, you don't have anything You don't have anything to say? What do what, what you want me to say? Uh, that's what you can say, tell me the truth. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. No, what you mean? Oh, 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 oh. Go, go, go. Stop running. Why is you running? You can't run from the truth, Lamon. Not going anywhere. I'm right behind you. Don't even think about it. Where are we going? What are you parking? Where is she going? Come on, man, come on. I let bull Man, open the door. Open the door. What you, what the is this? You gonna lay with her? You gonna lay with this bitch? Four years, Lamont, that's a long time, man. People change, man. Change? Over man. six months? I understand you just moved well, uptown six months ago. Nothing. Everything you got to ask because of me. And I appreciate all that. You we appreciate miss. that? We not on the same level no more. What happened? I left on clear. I understand man, I that. It made me who I am, but I'm in a new environment, new man now. I appreciate everything you done for me. So you gonna leave your out club bitch for this uptown hoe, really? No longer out clip. This is where I stay. Up town. You supposed to always be out clip. You better not come to the hood. What we gonna no. you up? You in that bitch. God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful night. Come on, let's go. God bless y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night. Y'all have a good day. God doesn't bless people that commit infidelity. Yeah. Hey, here he he's walking up behind us. I don't know if he wants to talk. For what? I don't know. He's walking up right here. I don't know. What could he possibly have said? Do you want to talk to him? Calm down. Look. I love you too much. You got too much respect for you for the end like this. You got no respect for me because if you did, you went over here with her. Talking about your homegirl, talking about drinks. Then you talking about babe, really? You leave it out cliff alone? Leave it alone. Don't lie to me. What you going to lie to me for? I mean, that's why I came back. Like I said, I got too much love and respect for you for the end like this. I came back tired letting know that that's pretty much what it is now, man. I mean, the good time. But then what you heard for then? Go like I say, I come to man, talk to you, man. you ain't got nothing to explain to me. Bye. So it's, See it's, you. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be like this, man. Right? I moved it out here. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I moved you out. You right, that's not how you gonna tell me we supposed to have something, we gonna be together. We trying to make plans for our kids, our family, and stuff like this. But this is what you show. This is this what you, where your morals, where your respect, worth anything else. You ain't got none of that. Yeah. Just you. Bye. You really got to talk like that? I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. These people, I don't care about you. This is exactly what I don't want, man. Man, I got s*** like it on my door all the time. But I chose you. This is the thing I give really? I don't need you. But when you fall on your ass and you don't have nothing no more, make sure that's who you win. I can't just say I appreciate everything you've done. You don't appreciate me if you don't appreciate me. You don't be telling me this. And I appreciate all this. You don't even need her. Yeah, you don't need me. You don't need me With the confrontation now behind her, Mimi asserts her independence. Later, 
Cheaters divulges her present circumstances. But now, Chris Rowe comes in to give you his take about the time he was busted on Cheaters. What was happening, we were having fun, we had some food. Um, Cindy and I had been guitar student and pupil for just like about a month or so, and nothing was intentional. Things just happened. It, and once we were sitting there enjoying, I saw these lights at the door. And then as soon as I saw her, I saw Catherine, I thought it was a joke. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm wait, listening wait, wait, to wait, music wait. and you were messing up this guy's set. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm Catherine. Uh, Why don't you hide? Hi. Has he ever mentioned me to you? No. Did you know that he has been with me for 20 years? You were messing up this guy's set. How, how we met was, uh, She's a friend of a friend who needed guitar lessons. She, she came over and we started playing and uh, there was just a little connection between us. Obviously she's a pretty girl. Um, I felt a little something between us, it happens. And one thing led to another. It wasn't planned. Uh, I, I wasn't scouting the situation that I wanted to present itself, it just happened. We all make mistakes and um, I'm having to live with the consequence. I'm willing to let this go, to forgive you, and, and move on. If I'm such a dog, on, why are you even sitting here talking I, to me? I'm not calling you a dog. Those are your words, not mine. Chris, you're not a dog, you're not anything. You're just someone that made a mistake, and that's all. And I'm just here to find out what your mistake was. You just go just get your hands off me, bro. Do not touch me, all right? I'm not here you're, to upset you're the you. One over here I'm not here to disrespect you. I'm trying you to talk her to her. Some answers. Well, some I'm not going to do it in front of you. Then where are you going to do it? In private. In private, you're going to go hide in your apartment where you bring other women. You're going to go do that? I've had enough of this. I wish Catherine the best. Our relationship is really not much of one anymore. I just turned 40 the other day, and I'm reflecting back. I I, I remember writing a paper in high school that I thought that I would have gone to university of of like Texas or, or Oklahoma or somewhere, and then I would have become a veterinarian, had a wife and a couple kids, and lived just like the Brady Bunch. That's what I thought was going to happen to me. But then I got the music bug, and it just never did. And I met Catherine, and we were a good team. And so it went on forever. Where am I at my relationships now? I date here and there. I don't have anybody special in my life. If the girl I'm supposed to be with finally comes into my life, and I'm the one for her, and she's the one for me, then maybe something will happen. As of right now, I just date whenever I can. Mimi Barber grieves for the loss of her relationship. However, she's grateful for the help of cheaters in uncovering the disingenuous actions of her now ex-boyfriend. The suspect, Lamont, discloses to cheaters how close he had become to his companion. The suspect has moved his companion into his residence. Lamont's companion, Asia, remains unavailable to comment to cheaters' producers. Cheaters to get her questions answered. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Since day one, Dustin has joked about, like, since day one that he wanted to marry me, and he knew that I was the one. And now, like, we hardly ever say I love you, and it's, it's very upsetting that we don't have this, this passion that we used to have anymore and, and three years has gone by and it's just it's tearing me apart that it's not the the same Dustin. Dustin Walsh, age 22, a stockroom manager suspected of shelving his girlfriend and restocking another relationship. Briefed on the suspect's schedule, Cheaters Intel units surround the suspect's place of employment. After a few hours, investigators spot their mark exiting his work. Walsh walks way down the street to arrive at a restaurant. An unknown woman waits, and he joins her at a table. The two make small talk for a bit, 
Things seem innocent enough as the pair get up to leave. However, cheaters operators note that all is not what it seems as the suspect holds his companion's hand while they stroll away. He's been very selfish lately and he doesn't share the car, leaves me at home stranded. He's just been very secretive and it just makes me wonder, like what is he really doing and why does he have to keep me away and he can't be honest with me we can't even have any conversations together where he's, he doesn't, he just shuts me out with anything I say. I try to talk to him and our conversations go nowhere. He gives me short answers and it's like he doesn't want to talk to me or anything to do with me anymore. Walsh and his mystery lady walk to a garden store. They amble inside and around the business and check out the various items. After a short while, the two leave the store. Walsh lovingly wraps his arm around his femme fatale and escorts the unknown woman to her vehicle. The lady gets in. Walsh shuts the door. As his date drives off, Walsh heads back to work, ending this day of surveillance. We used to be best friends and talk about everything, all our life stories, what we wanted to do as we grow older. And I just, I wanted to be with him forever. And I just don't feel like he's giving me the same love and has the same compassion like he used to. I don't know what's going to go on after I find out if something is going on. And I just, I want answers. Cheaters deploys a squad of detectives to the home Nikki shares with Walsh. Sometime later, the suspect leaves his home. Covertly tailed by a cheater's mobile unit, Walsh drives across town to a bar. Inside the bar, the suspect meets the woman from previous surveillance. Now identified only as Janine, the illicit pair act overly friendly, touching each other as they converse. A bit later, the suspect and his paramour leave the bar. Janine gives Walsh a quick kiss goodbye before the two walk to their respective vehicles. Cheaters investigators surround the suspect's employment. At the end of his work shift, Walsh gets into his car to leave. Trailed by Cheater's surveillance team, the suspect drives to a bar. Walsh meets up with Janine in the parking lot, greeting her with kisses and hugs. The two enter the building and grab a table on the crowded patio. Janine strokes Walsh's hair as they enjoy their evening. Finally quitting the bar, Walsh walks his companion hand in hand to her vehicle. The suspect passionately kisses Janine goodbye and the two lovers say goodnight. Cheaters operatives wrap up the case for a despondent Nikki. Coming up, the confrontation. Collating all evidence pointing to infidelity, Cheater summons Nikki to a client review. Courageously, Nikki decides to view the tapes and discovers the truth. Nikki, I just want to say I appreciate you coming out today. I understand that this has kind of been a long week for you. As per your request, we did watch Dustin for quite some time and compiled a lot of evidence. My question for you is, are you prepared to see that? Yes. All right. On this day of our investigation, Nikki, we are outside of Dustin's workplace. Sometime later, Dustin emerges and he walks across the street to a restaurant. That's when we see him meet this woman with the sunglasses on. A while later, she stands up, so does Dustin, and they walk outside holding hands. They then walk over to a store, they go inside, and they begin to look around at various items. We see antiques in there, some lamps, and sometime later we see them emerge, and Dustin puts his arm around her. He then walks her over to her vehicle, she gets inside, he shuts the door, and sends her on her way. Nikki, on this day of our investigation, 
As our detectives follow Dustin, he arrives at a bar and meets up with that same female from the day before. We see them converse at the bar. She leans in and kisses him on the cheek, and he smiles. While they're inside, Dustin receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this. After finishing up the phone call with you, that girl walks back outside and they embrace with a hug and a pretty long kiss. So Nikki, Dustin obviously has been lying to you about a lot of different things. You've seen that, you know that. At this point in time, we have an exact location of where they are. They're by a lake. So if we get in the vans, get rolling on the road, get there as soon as possible, we can confront them. Are you ready to go get the truth from Dustin and find out what's really going on? I'm ready. All right, right this way, please. There's our detective right there. Let's go ahead and stop and see what he's got to say. This is a really big leg, wow. How's it going, man? Doing well. All right, what so you got? all you got is got to do is take a left right here. All right. Go down to where those two cars are. Okay. Park the vehicles. Everybody needs to get out. Once you get down there, I'll meet you down. All right. And we'll go right in from there. All right, great. All right, thank you. Thanks Appreciate a lot, detective. Let's do our best to be quiet. Watch your step. All right, this way. Come on. What is this bull? You're working? I'm just uh, I'm here. Out here by the lake? Um, uh, who's, who's this? Janine. Hi, what's your name? Um, Janine. Janine, I'm yeah, Clark Gable this? with Cheaters. Hey. Uh, the reason why I'm here is because. What is that this, is, Dustin? That is Dustin's fiance of three years. Were you aware of that? I had no clue, actually. Wow. Hey, did you know this is my fiance right here? No, I'm sorry, babe. No, that's. What the hell, Dustin? I, I, oh. I'm Dustin, sorry. did you lie to this girl and then lie to your fiance? What did he tell you exactly? How did you guys meet? Uh, we worked together. You worked together? Yeah. Okay. But he never oh. mentioned that he had a girlfriend. Oh. Dick? So you lied, you lied to your fiance and you lied to this coworker of yours. Coming up, the conclusion. At this point in time, we have an exact location of where they are. They're by a lake. Oh my God. Dustin, what the f That is Dustin's fiance. Did you lie to this girl and then lie to your fiance? Why would you do this to people? No. You're uh, engaged? I love you. I How? Love you. What is this? No, what is this? Are you guys spending some time together? <laughs> what is this? No. You guys are going to restaurants. You guys are going shopping. We I work mean, together. Are you it's, ju me? it's just work. This is bull no. Do you kiss people that just work? No, I didn't mean to do this to you. I'm sorry. You didn't mean to do this. You didn't mean for her to play with your hair and for you to kiss her, for you to lie to me? What, what is this? It's a lot of romance for someone that's a co-worker. We're, we're just, we're, we're really good friends. That's yeah, it. Yeah, really I'm, good friends. What the hell, uh, Dustin? No, i Why didn't you ever mention you had a fiance? What's uh, wrong with you? Uh, You're uh, sick. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, baby. You're pretty sorry. I'm sorry. Pretty sorry. You're going to go in the way. Sorry. You. I just want you to know the gravity yes. of of what done to not only his fiance and his future, but also lying to you as a human being and as a you seem like a very nice girl. Yeah, I get it. So you never told her that you had a fiance or anything? No. I mean you should go clean off your dirty sins in that water, man. I'd walk a little farther out there maybe. How do you feel about yourself right now, Dustin? Pretty do you want to apologize maybe to your That's fiance? Right, you feel you're such a dog. I am sorry, Nikki. Don't tell any damn thing but that you have I'm, I'm sorry. God. I didn't mean to do any of this. I didn't mean to. That's all you have to say. You didn't mean to do anything. You mean to hurt her. That didn't start out like this. How did it start out then? 
We just went on and had a couple drinks. It was just it was shifts. I'm sorry. Do you normally know the girls whenever you're in a meeting? Oh, like, like relationship? Liar! Oh. 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 You're Drunk. Quick and me. You know, that's expensive stuff, man. That's going to cost you uh, a pretty penny. A lot more than the dates that you've been taking this girl on. Like, why would you cheat on her? She's, a, like, a lot cooler than you are, apparently. Oh, my God. Sorry, girl. He's he's nasty. So he's never once said anything to you? No. Anyone to work? At work? Not that I know of, at least. God, I'm so sorry. I can't do this. Well, can you talk to your fiance then? Maybe. He's Maybe. Flirty. I guess. Maybe. Oh, talk to me. I, I gotta hear everything from you. I need to get your side of the story. Talk to me. Most important. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to go this far. I didn't mean to go out with her. I didn't mean to lie to you. I'm I'm so sorry. So Janine, you need to tell me all about all about this. So he's very flirtatious. Acts like he, he's in an open relationship, and he works with you, and he yeah, pretty like much used that to... Yeah, nothing that he's ever pointed to her, that he had a fiance. He doesn't even wear a ring. Do you love me? I do love you. When you love someone, you, you tell the truth, and you talk to them. If there's a problem, talk to me. <laughs> it didn't mean to happen. I'm sorry. You don't really understand how bad that hurt me, seeing those videos, and you lying to me. On the phone? Okay, You're an ass. Go tell him to his face. I mean, I don't think he really takes it seriously. He's groveling, so I guess that's good enough to see. I can't believe it came down to this. I, I just want to go back home. We can talk about it. We can, so, we can make things better. So we're supposed to live our life like this didn't happen? Are we supposed to grow from this? Like, laugh at it like 10 years down the road. You remember that one time we were all cheaters? You piece of I, I just, no. I, I don't know what I can say, babe. No. I didn't. Go. Get out of my face. Dustin, give me my dick. Hey. Yeah. Um. You stupid. I can't believe you did this. Hey, what do you want to do? This is up to you. What do you want to do? I, I need time. Do you want to go tell them how you feel and then get out of here? Yeah. All right, where do you go? I'm sorry, girl, I had no idea. Dick. Look out of my face, dude. Get out. Let's go talk to him, give him an ultimatum, and then we'll go. Dustin! Give me your keys. Just give me your keys. What the f in your car. Like, hell, I'm going to stay here with you. You're an ass. How can you fiance? something for you. I didn't mean it. Can we just go home? Talk Dude, about it there with all these, all these cameras. you gave me? Here, take it back. Keep it. I want you to put it around your small little penis and f*** off. Babe. Hey, one other. Dustin, why would you do this to your fiance, man? Like, what was even the point? What was even the point? There's no point. Dumbass dude. Idiot. I know there's better people out there and someone that's not gonna treat me like this. So. Did he give you that ring back? I took it back. Well, if you take him back, that's here. your choice, but you can always pawn the ring and make some money. Sounds like a good idea. Following the confrontation, Nikki faces an extreme decision. At the end of the show, Cheaters updates you on the repercussions of her choice. But first, Joseph Tyler comes forward to give his side of the story surrounding the time he was caught red-handed with another man's girlfriend. You know, I was approaching my car, and you know what I'm saying, and me and Dee were walking together. All of a sudden, you know, this mob of people with cameras run out, and there's, uh, you know, there's cameras and lights and 
boom sticks or whatnot and it had it just been him um we could have talked about the situation like adults it was definitely the cameras um more than anything that that was the the most intrusive um during the the whole experience what's going on what's going on dude what the no, no. the What's going on? What's going on? Hey, 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 Face. But as far as uh, Desmond was concerned, uh, you know, things kind of got heated, but I, I didn't ever feel like he was a threat. He was just so small. You know, he was a little guy. He looked like a little little chihuahua just kind of nipping at you or whatever. But, you know, I really didn't take it much past that. Um, I, I think that he's just really delusional about, you know, his relationship and where he sees him and Dee going. Um, obviously, she doesn't feel that way that he does. Um, and, you know, to hear that they ain't slept together in months or what whatnot, you know, I mean, at least that's what she's telling me. And, you know what I'm saying, he's still in love. But, I mean, you know, if love don't live there no more, you know what I'm saying, you just got to move around, you know what I'm saying? So I was trying to talk to him, you know what I'm saying, man to man, and just tell him, like, you know, it is, it's not what you think it is. Um, and, you know, you just got to kind of deal with that, you know. You can don't wear your heart on your sleeve and nothing like that, but, you know what I'm saying, you just got to move on and let that go. Keep your hands off me, Doug, man. Bro, you better back up, You dog. better like, back up. Like, you don't even know me like that, little dude. dude. I don't give a Man. Like, dog. oh, ooh, you big, you a big, you a big man, you a big man, you big, big, you big man. You better back off, big man, bro. Back hey. off me, dog. Like you don't even know me like that, son. Man, you, you don't know me. Oh, uh, you know me and D are cool right now. Uh, you know, cur currently, you know, we, we're seeing each other. I still keep my eyes open. You know, I ain't never blind to nothing. Um, and I think that everybody must do that in their relationship. You know, keep your eyes open for for signs and stuff like that. But you know, make sure you make yourself happy. And, uh, you can definitely make the other person happy. So, and, you know, I think people fall out of love all the time, um, and sometimes that's just the way it is. Uh, you know, sometimes you know the love is gone, and uh, you know you can love somebody for an instant or a lifetime sometimes. But you know, it's a flip of a coin sometimes on how long that lasts. You know. Following the confrontation, Nikki Schultz makes the hardest decision of her life. She moves out of the home she once happily shared with the suspect. Nikki claims as much as it hurt at the time, she realizes that she could not look herself in the mirror if she forgave the suspect. For his part in the affair, the suspect, Dustin Walsh, admits to Cheaters producers that he broke Nikki's heart. The suspect says that he won't be making the same mistake anytime soon. The suspect's companion, Janine, declines to remark to cheaters about her role in the love triangle. Away from her and their children, Tiffany comes to cheaters in her quest for the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. When we first got together, we were always going places, we were always doing things, and granted, this is before we had two children, but even after, you know, our firstborn, we were still doing things, we were still going out, and then now we just had our second, and it, it's all changed. It's, he does, it seems like he just doesn't want to be around. He doesn't, he doesn't want that life anymore. You know, he tells me that uh, that he works late, but also I know that he likes to play poker, and there's some poker nights that he'll go out and play with his friends, you know, uh, go out for the night, and I don't mind that. I understand, you know, guys need guy time, um, but it, I don't know, I just, there just seems to be something off. John, age 24, a windshield repairman accused of ignoring cracks in his relationship. Briefed with the particulars of the case, Cheater's agents stake out the workplace of the suspect. Near sundown, John leaves work and drives to a seedy area of town. The suspect and his cheater's shadow arrive at a gentleman's club. John gets out of his car and walks into the strip club. He has cheated on the past, um, 
you know, I've actually caught him before, and he is, you know, doing the same stuff, lying. Um, I'm getting blocked phone calls at night from other girls saying that, that he's been with them, that I need to leave him, that I'm stupid for staying. But when I ask him about these, then he says that they're just jealous that he's still with me after all this time. When I get these phone calls, to be honest, I get mad. I don't want to believe that what they're saying is true. Um, but on the other hand, why would they lie? You know, I think about it, why, why so many girls? Why would they have tried to reach out to me and tell me if it wasn't true? I mean, how, how many girls could actually be that jealous? Inside, Cheater's operatives track the suspect as he stands at one of the stages talking to an unknown female. The woman and John converse as she shakes her rump on stage. After a long while, the suspect leaves the club with a spring in his step. John returns home, wrapping up this night's surveillance. I've forgiven John a lot in the past for a lot of different things that he's done, uh, some of them being cheating. But if I find out that he's cheating on me again, I already told him, it's done, it's over. I can't, I can't go through this anymore. I can't put my kids through this anymore. They don't deserve it, and I don't deserve it. We deserve to have him there 100% with us full time, and he can't just be running around on me. Knowing the suspect's schedule, the cheater surveillance team continues the stakeout of John's workplace. Sometime in the afternoon, the suspect leaves work. John follows the same route he drove the day before, arriving back at the same strip club. The deceitful boyfriend goes into the establishment where he meets the same dancer, now identified only as Lucky. The entertainer gives the suspect a few lap dances. During his private show, Lucky grinds on John, kissing him passionately. After some time and quite a bit of money later, the suspect exits the dance bar. John returns home to a disconcerted Tiffany. As with previous days, Cheater's investigators continue the stakeout of John's workplace. The suspect leaves this evening, headed down the same route back to the very same strip club he visited before. Meeting with Lucky seems to be a regular occurrence. Dropping more cash, John receives more lap dances from his regular lady. At some point in the evening, the twosome sit quietly, kissing at a booth. Lucky even walks John to the exit to give him a goodbye kiss. As the suspect heads home for the evening, Cheaters concludes the case for a betrayed Tiffany. Coming up, the confrontation. Documenting all lies and deceit, Cheaters calls on Tiffany to arrange for her to view the facts. With fear and anger building in her heart, Tiffany meets up with the intention of protecting her family and relationships. Tiffany, I know it's been kind of a long week. I'd like to say thank you for coming out this evening. I know you've been going through a lot with your relationship. But Tiffany, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. My question is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? Yeah, I want to see it. All right. Tiffany, we begin our investigation outside of John's workplace. A while later, John emerges and he gets into his vehicle and leaves. As our detectives follow John, he turns into a strip club and he parks his car. That's when we see him get out, and John walks inside. That's when we see him conversing with this unknown female, and that's when things get a little bit more friendly than I'd say your average customer. He begins to kiss this woman. Tiffany, he gets a phone call when all this is going on. What you're about to hear is the audio from that. Tell me if you remember this. After finishing up the phone call with you, 
He then returns inside the strip club and some time passes and he leaves. That's when we see him return home for the evening. On this day of our investigation, Tiffany, we're outside of John's workplace. A while later, John emerges after what seems to be a long day. As our detectives follow John, he arrives at that same strip club, pulls in, parks his vehicle, and walks right back inside once again. That's when we see him receiving multiple lap dances in a VIP section of the strip club and kissing this unknown female. And before leaving, he kisses this female and smiles while walking out the door. He then nonchalantly walks outside, jogs to his car, and returns home for the evening. So seeing your money and your honey go to a strip club, I mean, how does that make you feel? It pisses me off. That is not what I work hard for. So Tiffany, after everything that you've just seen, my question for you is, are you ready to go confront John? Let's go. All right, well, listen. I'm ready. We've got Detective Gomez on scene. He's at that same strip club that they're at. It's called the Pearl. If we get in the vans and get to the location, we can bust him. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right this way, please. Next, the conclusion. They're inside together, sitting at a poker table. What the f are you doing with that ratchet ass bitch? We're done. All right. We're done. done. Go home with that. Bust it up. Hey, John. John. Can I ask you a couple questions, man? You want to go outside for a minute? I just have a couple questions for you. Like what, man? My name's Clark Gable. I'm with Cheaters. I'm just here because your girlfriend hired us. So you guys been four years. You have, man? I'm just asking for the truth, dude. That's all. Is that your is that your chick? Don't you have kids with her? It doesn't matter, man. Don't you love that woman? Something like that, but you look like a Clark Kent. Sorry, man. Dude, what if you came in here and you saw your girl doing this with another guy? Wouldn't that make you upset? Yeah, something like that. All right, so I just have a question. How did you meet this girl? Coming here, playing poker, having a good time. I understand that. That was it, man. Did one thing lead to the next, though? Because, I mean, I have multiple shots of you guys getting a little bit more comfortable. Okay. Kissing her and... The possibility of me getting with the stripper. Mm -hmm. Does that seem like butterflies and rainbows to you? Does that Absolutely seem not. like, uh... I'm just going to cast a reel and reel it in. Does that seem like a possibility to you? I mean... That look, seems more fetched. It doesn't you know, look far-fetched right there. I was just having fun, playing poker, doing me. I can understand what happened. Hey, y'all can't come back. Hey, 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 h
chill out. <laughs> what is she mad for? Putting her finger up in my face. Let me get at her. Let me get at her. Talk to you for a minute. Dude, stop like, worrying about the cameras. Oh, Keep her. Yeah. That's your, because that's your lady. Because you guys are my business. No, we're not. How the f would you Knock feel? Knock it off! How the f would you feel if you were just sitting Knock high and dandy by your damn Knock self? Knock it off! Would you it's feel? It's not about me how I feel. Stop. It's about how you feel. You don't Disrespect know how the your girl. Feel. I don't know how you feel because I'm not in your position. Be that f it on camera, man. How the f do you feel? Let's just go. How you feel, bitch? I feel good. How you feel, I feel bitch? good, bitch. How you feel, bitch? I feel How good. You feel, Look what I got. Look what I got. Look what I got. Fuck you. Hey, you bitch. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come on, bitch. Look at me. Come Look on. at you. Look at me, bitch. Look at me, bitch. Look at me, ho. Look at me. Oh. Oh. Let's get in the van. Let's get in the van. <laughs> I don't even have to touch you. You do it yourself. Yeah, I got it. Back in the van. Dumbass bitch. Yeah. Heard that hoe, bitch. John, do you have anything to say about your girl or anything about your kids? You guys don't know how real this is. You guys just think it's all make believe in front of cameras. It's not. This isn't make believe at all. It's just about fixing what happened with you and your girl. Okay, so how was all this LED lights? How was so this little going on? That's so we can Okay, hear sorry, you. I don't mean to hit it, but I just want to beat it like a damn Congo drum. I'm not getting anything from you, man. After the chaotic confrontation, Tiffany struggles to understand why the suspect would treat his family in such a callous manner. Later, Cheaters informs you on how she copes with her experience. Now, 
Brian Bass returns to give more details of the night he caught his girlfriend with another woman on Cheaters. Yeah, during the bust, all that was going through my mind was pretty much just how terrible the last few months had been and just how rough it was on me and how it just kind of tore me apart emotionally. Honestly, I, I uh, saw red at first and I was really, really upset and couldn't control my anger a little bit and it felt like a huge burden was relieved though afterwards. <laughs> what the hell? I saw the video. I know what you've been this doing. This is amazing. We're just friends. We're just hanging out. This is full. This is full. You had told me that you were going to be at your grandma's today, and this is where you are. I mean, we're just having drinks. We're not doing anything. Yeah, I don't believe you. Yeah, I could have probably done a few things differently to make this relationship work out. Uh, I could have paid a little more attention. I could have worked less. But honestly, I kind of feel like. Uh, we, we hit that point of no return maybe six months ago, and uh, we never looked back. I this can't wait for this to be you're on TV. Ridiculous stuff. I can't wait for this to be on TV. You're pathetic that you did that to me. You're mom and dad. See what you. 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 I can't wait. It'll be sad. Oh! Seriously, It'll that, be that's so ridiculous. Nice. Security, security. Oh, look, look at this. Look at this bitch. Hold look at this bitch. Up, hold up, hold up. Hey, hey, Brooke. Brooke. Are better than you anyway. Oh, yeah, really? I'm just being a man. Ugly ass. Push me. Push me. Push me. Push me. Push me. Never. After uh, this whole confrontation went down, I actually uh, immediately felt like I needed to drink. Honestly, I just need to get out there, do my own thing, meet new people. Uh, and just uh, never, never quit, keep going, and that's it. Live every day like it's the last. Following the disturbing realization of her boyfriend's destructive behavior, Tiffany Crawford seems determined to hold her relationship together. Tiffany declares that although she forgives him, this will absolutely be the last time. The suspect, John, at first admits he's too embarrassed to talk to Cheater's producers. Then John finally expresses that he has cut off all contact with his former companion. The companion, known as Lucky, only states to Cheater's that she believes the suspect will be back in the club sooner or later. the experts in fidelity for answers to her questions. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, he's been a little bit more distant lately. Like, um, I just feel like he just wants to be all business with me. Like, maybe he's just around still for stage time, um, you know, using this as a vessel to further his comedy career, but he's kind of washed up. I, he's, you know, I've been out a lot, and he's been passive aggressive toward me a lot. Um, yeah, he's not taking me out. He's not, you know, um, being affectionate toward me. It's, you know, something's going on. Dave Beckers, age 45, a part-time comic suspected of turning his relationship into a bad joke. Cheaters deploys a squad to stake out the home Jess shares with the suspect. Just after sundown, Beggars and Jess leave the residence, followed tightly by a cheater's mobile unit. The client and her boyfriend drive across town to a comedy club. The pair enter the building. Inside, Beggars bellies up to the bar as Jess talks to a few people in the lobby. While Jess grabs a table for them, the suspect stays at the bar. An unknown female, the bartender, walks over to the suspect's spot and begins chatting with him. Well, I hear a lot of rumors when I'm out of town that Dave's talking to other girls around the comedy clubs, and, you know, I don't want to jump to conclusions and believe them. I know people could be petty, especially when it comes to other people becoming successful. 
And um, when I come back home from being on the road, I try my best to connect with him, you know, to catch up, go out, have fun. But he doesn't want to do that. He always tells me, oh, well, you seem tired, so I'm going to go off and do my own thing. And he doesn't say where he's going. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to fight with him. I just want to... I just want to catch up and, you know, and, you know, nurture our relationship further. And he's just, he's up to something. Dave continues to smooze with the pretty barmaid for a short while. And after a few moments, the unknown female steps out from behind the bar and beggars follows her outside. On the patio, the suspect and his sexy bartender continue the conversation. Beggars plays with a woman's hair as they talk. Finally, the bartender finishes her cigarette. Jess then arrives, interrupting the conversation. Snagging her guy, Jess and Beggars finally leave. We have spent five years together. We used to be each other's number one fans. We used to really support each other. And, you know, sometimes he's still sweet to me. It happens very, very far in between periods of arguing, but sometimes he tells me I'm great, I love you, and that just makes me think, well, what, what did you do? Like, why are you trying to finesse me like this? And it's just, it's not the Dave that I, you know, built my life with for these last few years. You know, if Dave's cheating on me, I am not forgiving him. He is out, I am throwing all of his stuff to the street, and I will never let him work in the clubs with me again. Cheater's detectives keep vigil over Jess and the suspect's residence. Sometime later, agents spot beggars as he leaves home. A mobile unit tails him across town to a strip mall parking lot. Beggars gets out and waits a few minutes. Shortly, the pretty bartender from previous surveillance, now identified only as Stormy, arrives in her SUV. Beggars takes Stormy's purse pops the trunk of his own vehicle and retrieves what can only be described as an art piece. The unlikely duo stroll to a nearby restaurant for a quick bite. On the patio, Beggars romantically feeds his lunch day the bite of his own dish. A short while later, having finished their repast, Beggars and Stormy walk around the area to an art house. A few minutes later, the pair leave the art house without Beggars' art piece. The suspect returns his companion to her vehicle and leaves, ending this day of surveillance. With intel from Jess that she left town on business, Cheater's agents stick to the game plan of staking out the residence. After dark, operatives watch as Beggars exits. The trailing Cheater's squad notes the suspect takes the known path to the comedy club. Beggars enters the building, and guess who he meets? Stormy, of course. They converse at a table for a bit before entering the stage area. Once inside, Beggars commences to do his stand-up routine in front of an almost empty room. After his bit finishes, Beggars and Stormy leave the club. The suspect and his hot date traipse back to his parked car. The lovers get into the vehicle and take the familiar route back to his residence. Beggars escorts Stormy into the dwelling he shares with Jess. Footage provided by one of two interior cameras placed by Jess shows the impious sweethearts sharing an impetuous kiss. Stormy steps into another room as the suspect sits down. When the young hottie returns, she obviously has an interesting evening plan, being that she's stripped down to a thong and carries a pair of handcuffs. Stormy climbs into the suspect's lap for a few minutes, and eventually, Stormy leads Beggars to the kitchen area. The bartender handcuffs the suspect to a beam supporting the kitchen ceiling. With Beggars hanging by his arms, Stormy proceeds to kiss and fondle him. However, the joke lies on the suspect as Cheaters ties up the case for a betrayed Jess. Coming up, the confrontation. With all evidence pointing to infidelity firmly established, Cheaters requests a meeting with Jess to examine the sorrowful information. Summoning all her stoic courage, 
Jess determines to learn the truth. Jess, first thing I'd like to say is um, thank you for coming out this evening. I understand that you've been going through a lot. As you know, we have conducted our investigation, Jess. My question for you is, are you prepared to see the evidence that we have come up with? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Jess, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. We see Dave emerge. He walks over to his vehicle and he gets inside. He has something in his hand. Not really sure what that was, but it looked like a form of some sculpture. Yeah, he does this weird thing with dolls. Okay. Well, he leaves and then he arrives at a parking lot. We see him get out of his vehicle. He closes the door. Uh -huh. A few moments later, that blonde girl pulls up uh -huh. and we see Dave go to the back of his trunk and pull out that doll sculpture. And they walk away together. That's when we see them go across the way and they arrive at a restaurant. Dave opens up the door for her. They walk inside, sit at the outdoor patio and share a meal. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize her? Yeah, that's Stormy. That's Stormy? Yeah. Does this seem strange to you at this point? No, we, we, we're, we're all friends. Okay. It's, you know. After finishing up their meal, they return to that parking lot. That's when we see Dave say goodbye to Stormy. He gets into his vehicle and he leaves. On this day, as our detectives follow Dave, he arrives at the comedy club. Okay. He parks, gets out of his vehicle, and he walks inside. That's when we see him okay. go sit out on the patio with Stormy. We then see Dave doing his bit up on the stage while Stormy watches. After he finishes up, she hands him the keys to his car. Mm -hmm. They walk out together, and mm -hmm. they leave together. As our detectives follow Dave, he then arrives back at your residence. Mm -hmm. We see the two of them walk inside holding hands, and that's when he points out his sculpture of doll collections. Whoa. And she lays a kiss did on Dave. Did just kiss? They did. Dave then proceeds to sit on the chair. Whoa. She goes into the bathroom, comes out completely topless with her underwear on only. Oh my gosh. And a pair of handcuffs. That's my friend. This that's my chair. You recall that surveillance equipment that we installed in your house when we began this oh, whole yeah, process? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. We had a hidden audio conversation we picked up, and uh -huh. that's what you're about to listen to. She's gone. She's in Seattle. She is not coming back. We know it's funny. I was uh, jealous of her getting that kid, and now I'm like, huh? In Seattle, a bunch of sweaty hippies or here. I went from a comfortable chair to a gorgeous story in my life. I could just strangle her right now. I completely like, understand that. Like we have, this is five years of my life with my friend. Like I'm, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. After finishing yeah. up that little conversation, Dave stands up, Stormy takes him over to the rafter in the house, handcuffs him, begins to make out with him, begins to kiss him multiple times. Whoa and you could only imagine what else happens. Jess, I think you've seen enough. At this point in time, why don't we get in the vans and get on the road? We can get to that comedy club. They're there together. Are you ready to bust, Dave? I'm ready to bust, Dave. Mm -hmm. right. Both of them. Right this way, please. Let's do this. Excuse us. Go, 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 go. Hello. Yeah. Right there. This is <laughs> Coming up, the conclusion. We can get to that comedy club. They're there together. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you, you are my friend. You are not care about you. You, 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 you stabbed me on the camera. Are you f***ing happy then? Go, take it. Is he shooting with cocaine? Can you this? Yeah, that's Stormy, the bartender here. My boyfriend is five years.
to you. I always say your material because I feel sorry for you. You're so not funny. It's sexually transmittable. I am getting less funny just by being with you. You made my vagina retarded. It drools now like a retard. So Stormy, what happened? Oh, what happened? Why would you do this? Why would I do this? He was going to leave the car, okay? Oh, so anyway, guys. Oh, right. All right, I understand that. I am so happy that me, my embarrassment, helped your career out. Congratulations, oh, thank okay? Thank Congratulations. You. Oh, you're so and guess what? You Best so Get out of my face. Just stop. Get out of my face. Guess what? You're never here, okay? I mean, does sorry mean anything? Yeah, bitch, I know. You guys happy? Everything? Awesome. Got her slap out of me. You got her on stage. How dare you me. talk to me like that? How dare you go up and talk to me how like that? You, who do you think you, you are? You slap the out of me. What is this? You're how do you slap the out of me? Of course I did. Look at you buying this little freaking Mustang like a Frisco mom. Oh my, oh my gosh, that wasn't enough for your midlife crisis? You had to go pretty much your daughter? That's disgusting. Him, her, both of them. Dave, I think, you, I think you need to take a deep breath and relax. All right, listen, you guys had a great relationship and then something went wrong. Mm -hmm. Obviously she's gone a lot, I understand that. Why wouldn't you just communicate that to her in the first place and just say, hey, listen, Sweetie, you're gone so much. Did you not see how she reacted? Did you not see how she reacted? Okay, she beat the shit out of me in front of the cameras. If I would have told her any of that would have happened, she would have beat the shit out of me then. Dude, you got some so issues, weird. man. You got some Why anger issues. Why does she have it? Well, because she's angry because you cheated on her. I mean, yes. I could show you if you want to see it again. I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. I'm and you made her one of your doll oh, yeah, sculptures? No. That looked pretty near and dear. You yeah, made... you're 40 playing with dolls. That's, okay. that's There we go. There we go. That's great. awesome. Yeah. Do you think that's it awesome. would have been a better idea to maybe get like a sex doll to play with instead of a real one? Dave, you two were spending a lot of time I, together. I know. I was there. That's me. I know. You don't have to show me, okay? But why did you do that? Why did I do it? Yeah. Because she's hot, okay? And she's gone. That's why I did it. What would you do? Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. That's beautiful. And this is gone all in time. You know, don't, I would be honest with away. my artistic girlfriend and tell her how I truly feel instead of lying and cheating on her. Thank you. Well, guess what? It's done, okay? It's over. It's done. So It's over now that you've screwed up. Yeah, it's over now, that she, beat, it's over now that she beat the out of me, so it's over. Your so face is bleeding and I can't happy. even recognize yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Dave. Uh -huh, it's so uh -huh. terrible. I can't wait to go cops. It's going to be awesome. Really, Dave, that's all you have to say instead of apologizing? What else do you want me to say? Apologize. What? No! I'm going to apologize. She beat the out of me. What the am I going to say to her? Hit me again. you. I would say sorry. What do you want to do? This still to me up to you. Do you feel like you've gotten what you've needed? Um, yeah, I've gotten what I needed. Mm-hmm. .com Completely disgusted by her boyfriend's atrocious behavior, Jess realizes she has a difficult decision to make. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her plan for the future. But now, Cheaters welcomes Sarah Reed. Sarah comes forward to clear up how her relationship with her husband's best friend was unveiled on Cheaters. When we were caught, I was definitely embarrassed. Um, not only in my actions, but just the confrontation in itself was just, it was in a public place, so it was kind of embarrassing having so many people staring at us and sort of knowing what we did without knowing the backstory behind it. What are you doing, man? Oh, okay, calm down. My wife's here, you're with my wife, yeah? We're just, just having, having a pie, just having a pie, having a couple of beers. Is it nice? Is it nice? Is it nice? Is it him? Why would you do this to your best what friend? You Why would do? you do this to your husband? What are you doing? Simon, what are you doing? Having a beer, having some pie. 
Like, why would you do this to your friend, Chris? Well, he said to what did I do? What did I do? Oh, I we haven't done anything. We're, eat, we're literally eating pie. We haven't I've done seen anything. I've seen the videos. I've seen what you've been up to. There's no videos. I've seen there's no videos. Simon, there's I've no videos. It. When I started seeing Chris, it really was not intentional, um, I, the, the act of cheating. It just kind of slowly progressed. He came to stay with Simon and I, and we ended up at first just hanging out as friends, and then kind of one thing led to another, and it progressed and progressed. And um, then we ended up getting together. Um, I, we knew it was wrong at the time, but just because Simon and Chris had been friends for so long, and Chris, Simon and I were married, it just made for a really sort of bizarre love triangle. Took my heart, you sliced it open, you shoved up my ass and me. That's how bad it is. Like, don't come home, find a way home, f yourself, go f yourself, Fine. peace out. F you guys. F you. F you. You know what? F you. F you, man. Yeah. What's up? Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Oh, man. Oh, man. Stop. 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 <laughs> the relationship with Chris um, has actually gone beyond my expectations, and now that I'm divorced, we actually are together, and we are actually planning on getting married ourselves in within the next year or so. We just kind of realized that we're more compatible. Um, we're we're into the same things, the same music. We both are very social, and we enjoy um, spending time with each other. Following the confrontation, Jess Allen realizes her comedy partner deserves to be left alone. Jess has also broken off the friendship she once had with the suspect's companion. For his part in the whole ordeal, Dave Beggars refuses to take any responsibility. When questioned by Cheater's producers, the suspect claims, I can't believe she'd further her career by ruining mine the way she did. Jess didn't have to pull all this out in the open made me look like an ass in my own hangout. I can't even go back in there without getting laughed off stage. The suspect's companion, Stormy, did not wish to comment to cheaters on her involvement. And this is Cheaters. What I've noticed different besides the fact that he works hours and hours and hours a day, he'll go out of town randomly. Aside from that, I have noticed just the distance between us is completely different, it's completely changed. The communication that we once had is no longer there. The nights that we'll go out and just say, hey babe, let's just go have fun tonight. That's no longer. Um, his friends, he's gotten a little more secretive as far as who he's hanging around. Everything has changed. It's a complete 180. Suspect's identity withheld. Age 35. A referee accused of foul play with his relationship. Cheaters dispatches agents to the home the suspect shares with Jessica. On this day, the suspect leaves driving away in his car. Followed by the cheater's team, the suspect arrives at a park. Sometime later, an unknown female pulls up into the spot next to the suspect. The referee greets the woman with a hug and a kiss. Holding the passenger door open like a gentleman, the suspect puts his mysterious lady into his vehicle. He then climbs into the driver's seat and the pair begin to kiss. We do sleep together, um, and it's at his discretion. We sleep together. Um, several nights, I'll go sleep on the couch when I'm feeling a certain way about um, how he comes home smelling. He'll come home smelling fruity. And I know you've been refereeing a game for hours at a time. You're not supposed to be smelling like fruit and strawberries. So I'll go sleep on the couch, come back, and he'll be. I'll wake up and he's gone. When I do confront him about smelling funny or smelling weird or fruity, he'll say it's his air freshener inside of his car. 
um, he's been smoking or he's been smoking cigarettes and he didn't want to come in my home smelling like cigarettes. So he'll tell me, oh, it was just the air freshener inside of my car. And that's his explanation for smelling like a completely different woman. A while later, the suspect removes his striped referee shirt. The mystery woman gets out of the suspect's car and leading the way, the femme fatale saunters down the sidewalk toward the trees. Quite some time later, the suspect and his companion finish their jaunt through the park. The deceitful referee escorts his partner to her vehicle, leaning in to give the woman a goodbye kiss. The suspect then gets into his car for the return ride home to a disconsolate Jessica. Deep down inside, I know. I know what's going on, but you never really want to just say, hey, he's cheating on me, I'm finna leave him. I wanted to just avoid this for so long, just avoid finding out the truth. It's not just a feeling anymore. A year ago, it was just like a feeling, but now I'm like, okay, you think I'm stupid now. So I'm. this is what you're gonna do? This is what I'm gonna do. Cheaters operatives continue the stakeout of Jessica and the suspect's residence. After some time, the suspect emerges, carrying a bag and garbed in referee gear. The suspect drives to his favorite park, pulling into a spot next to an unknown vehicle. The woman from previous surveillance, now identified only as Tanay, gets out to greet the suspect. Taking off his referee clothing again, the suspect preps himself for a romantic walk through the park. At some point, the pair stop on a bridge to admire the surroundings. They passionately kiss. After some time, the two playful lovers emerge from the trees. Tanae straddles her referee's back. The suspect puts her down near the vehicle. Before leaving, the roguish referee shares a few intimate kisses. And finally pulling away, Tanae turns to her vehicle. The suspect gives her a goodbye tap on her ample bottom. As the man returns to his car, the van pulls away, ending this day of surveillance. Cheaters investigators continue to stake out Jessica and the suspect's residence. The suspect emerges from his abode and leaves for the day. He packs his gear into his trunk and drives away. Definitively noting the routine, Cheaters follows the suspect to his regular hangout, the park. Tanay, who's been waiting for him, greets her referee. The young lady then gets into the suspect's car. Today's dalliance goes into another direction. Instead of a walk in the park, the pair drive to a nearby hotel. Holding his paramour's hand, the suspect escorts the woman into the building. A long while later, the suspect and Tanay exit the hotel. The duo walk across the parking lot to a breakfast restaurant. Grabbing a booth, the suspect sits down next to his lover, cuddling and kissing her sweetly. Sometime later, the suspect and Tanay leave the restaurant. They drive back to the park, and as the suspect gives Tanay a final kiss, Cheaters prepares to head back to headquarters to prep a package for a distressed Jessica. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's infidelity proven, Cheaters requests a meeting with Jessica to disclose the findings. Feeling uncomfortable, Jessica attempts to prepare herself for the disheartening news. As you know, Jessica, we have conducted our investigation and we have come up with some pretty interesting findings. Are you prepared to see that? I'm as ready as I'm gonna be. I'm just not ready to get this over with. Okay. Move forward or stay. We begin our investigation outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see emerge, he's in his referee outfit, he gets into his vehicle, and he leaves. As our detectives follow he arrives at a park, and sometime later, this unknown vehicle arrives and this woman steps out. They embrace with a hug. You recognize her at all? I don't, but we about to get to know each other. Okay, well, continuing on, this woman gets into the passenger side of the vehicle. He opens the door for her, and he shuts it. He then walks in, gets in on the driver's side, and it's 
really not clear what's going on in the vehicle, but I could see her leaning over into the driver's side. When he gets out, he looks a little sweaty. He takes off his referee shirt, puts it in the back, and they walk past the vehicles and into the park. That's when we see moments later after a walk through the park, he opens the door for this unknown female, reaches in for a kiss, closes the door, goes back over to his vehicle, she leaves, and so does he. On this day, we were outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see emerge, and dressed in some business attire. As our detectives follow him, he arrives at the park where that same woman is waiting for him. He greets her with a very long hug and a kiss. That's when he proceeds to put her in the passenger side of his vehicle, and they drive together, and they arrive at a hotel. As you can see, he opens the car door, escorts her out of the vehicle, and they hold hands and walk inside together. They get a room together, and a while later, they come back out of the hotel. After finishing up their antics there, they walk across the street to a Waffle House. They go inside and get very comfortable with each other. While he's inside of this Waffle House, Jessica, he receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this. So Jessica, at this point in time, with the intel that we have, they're at the same park together. We're going there right now. Are you ready, Jessica, to, to confront? I'm ready. It is what it is. All right. I saw what I needed to see. Don't run. What the are you running for? Why are you running, bitch? You was mad enough to do this. Where are you going? What the is going on? Where are you going? Why are you running? Come out here and talk to me for a second. Hey, man, talk. Come, 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 come talk to me for a second. You were mad enough to do so what You mad enough to go cheat with a bitch, but you ain't mad enough to talk to me about it. Hey, man. What the is going on? So we get that out. Coming up next, the conclusion. With the intel that we have, they're at the same park together. Bitch, you up. You mad enough to go cheat with a bitch, but you ain't mad enough to talk to me about it. So we get that shit out. You cheaters, man. Y'all got that. Say, man. Say, man, get that. What the fuck off me? Get the fuck off me. Y'all better get this off of me. I know y'all better get this motherfucker off me. Get the fuck off me. So, man. So you mad enough to go cheat with a bitch, but you not mad enough to talk about it. Get that shit out of my motherfucking face. Who's that woman I, back I there? I know, get it out my face. But you mad enough to go cheat with the bitch. You better take your little ass off. You mad enough to go cheat. So what the is this? Who Some is side this? piece hoe? Who is that woman? Do you know? And don't sit up here and lie in my face after I done seen everything. Say, look here, man. Bitch, you look at me. Man. Say, you better keep going. Get the up. Hey, Relax. Get the what are you putting me, your hands on her for, man? Why would you touch a woman like that? Get that out of my face. Oh, you know. Yeah. So who are you going? She is doing here, man. Today. Did you know about me? Who? No. This is his girlfriend. I, I, I mean, you I'm his girl. girl. Yeah, but I didn't know nothing about you. We been okay, doing so this for a, months. That's a you gotta explain with him. But I've been with this man. You come out here talking to all this big bad ass. So like you've been wrong? ultimate ass mother. So, you so, ain't even. This so, in the real so, mother. It's real. So, so, you acting like you was supposed to be that ass. That's why. You are right. You coming and landing in my bed every night. Yeah, right. this you landing my bed every doing. night. Hey, what you doing? In this bitch. Hey, what you doing? Yo, in the bed. You want to be bored with them hoes on TV. So you, you got another bitch. Reality TV. So you got another bitch. You got it on TV. Bitch, mad. So you got another bitch. Yeah, yeah, I been another bitch. You been okay, then go be with that hoe. You go live with that bitch. Listen go live with her. You don't be out here. Keep this mother off me. She's upset. 
answers for me, man. What did it come down? Let me talk. All right, call you can't even hey, look at me. I do you can't even look at Jessica, me, bitch. Shut up. Look, no, hold on. Shut, shut your motherfucking ass up. 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 Shut your but well, don't sit up and act so like you just all the motherfucking innocent in this I ain't never said hope. I was perfect. Right. But I don't okay. do this. This is what the right. I don't do. You don't do Been that same man to come to me and tell me I'm leaving. How easy is that? Why she can't act like this when I'm at home? She Why said, she can't be on me when I'm at the motherfucking crib? She said Why she can't be all up my motherfucking... She a damn lie. I'm, when I come because to the house, tell you what she do. Your time is all immediately. All the mother. Little Sorry. housewives. That's who don't she want. Don't touch me. That's who don't she. Touch she want. Well, at least that's who she are hey, actually baby, your working. Man, your man needs their time. Wait till I see then, a candy wedding. Wait till I see a little scrappy man. Little scrappy. No. She don't ever come give me no motherfucking love. Right, so right. I'm saying. So I go out and get some love. Now she wants some motherfucking that. attention. Man. Oh, man, let's go. Then get out of my house. I will. Little you bitch, gonna we gonna see how long you be living with this house. You gonna be on the street because you ain't gonna have no to pay no more. I a whole lot of broke at you to drive around in the damn 740. You got this bitch driving a minivan and you gonna yeah, compare bitch, this hoe to me? It don't matter, bitch. Look at I you. You want to build home. Why you still look fighting? At me. Come on, look at me. Why you look still at me fighting? And look at you. Why you still Get your ass off me, Why you still fighting? Because you a bitch. Yeah. You a bitch. You can't be You're Get the off me. Get out of my god, you right in my damn view. Where this bitch at? She's right over there. I can't even see. Can y'all move the van? Why you all over there talking, bitch? I'm over here. Nah, bitch, don't leave, weak ass hoe. This hoe. Oh, she's turning around. Where are you going, bitch? Where are you going, hoe? Where are you going, bitch? Why you going? Get your bitch, get your ass off me, ho. Get the bitch, bitch. Get the fuck off me, ho. Get your ass off me. Get the, yeah. Get your ass off me, bitch. Weak ass ho. Run your motherfucking ass up again. Weak ass is she driving. Come on, let's go. You my shirt? Yeah, let's go. Before you leave me, man. Can I get one word before you leave? What's that? I understand if she doesn't do things that please what? you, but four years. Just remember, four years. I loved her enough to take care of the mother, and then you want to get on camera. You want to get on camera and talk. America going to be mad at me because I just broke ass. No, nope. you because you were honest. Hey, you were honest, and that's what I want to say thank hey, man, you for. Man, y'all get damn car before we spark out on this mother. You talking about broke? My bands is paid for, baby. I'm gonna upgrade her like I upgraded your dumb ass. Nah, bitch, you ain't upgrade. You in the right. My go, my car. you go in. After the confrontation, Jessica ponders the best course to follow. Stay tuned as Cheaters divulges her choice. But next, Cheater sits down with Kat. Kat comes forward and bears all to tell her side of the story about the afternoon she was caught with another woman's husband. Well, it was just like any other day we were going to work on the sculpture and it was really hot in there. Um, he was rubbing, I think, water on my, bi my back and we were, we were intimate for a moment. And the next thing I know, chaos breaks loose and all these strange people come running in. This woman comes in screaming like a lunatic, screaming at me, pushing me. And I didn't know what was going on until afterwards. And I was just mortified. What are you doing? What is this? For God this. What does it look like? What does it look like? I'm his wife, honey. The about. I know all about. No, no. God. Everything I've done for you, Johnny. And he told me the whole time that they had an open marriage 
and that his wife had like seen the sculpture and she was keeping up with what we were doing and you know once I realized it was his wife and that she was unaware of everything that he told me was a lie and I was insulted and I, my feelings were hurt and once the shock wore off I was just angry. I have no use for him, he does not need to contact me. If anyone needs a reference or anything on him, he's not gonna like what I have to say. Um, I'll vouch that no one needs to work with him again. He's untrustworthy and he's a pig. Was this sculpture right here based on, on your on your body? I was modeling for this guy and he said that his wife and him have some sort of weird relationship and she was down with all this. And I don't know what chose you. I built my life around you. I'm ready to have a child with you. I want to build a future with you. And this is, this is what you give me. You don't tell me this I'm even worthy you of that. You, know, so you make it out like I'm not even worthy of that. Oh. This, this is what's so freaking important to you right here. This stupid piece of Oh. You don't know art, Johnny. You don't know it. You don't know anything. With everything that transpired, um, I'm almost glad that it did because it did teach me a lot about the industry and how to move forward in it and to do my research and my homework on photographers and artists. And it was my fault as well as anyone else's for being naive and not, not paying attention to what was right in front of me. My career is going great though. Um, I'm still getting gigs and having fun. So I'm not gonna let him, you know, stop me from doing what I do and what I love. Directly after the confrontation, Jessica Sanders packed her bags and moved out of the residence she shared with the suspect. Jessica swears that there exists a man somewhere just for her. When approached by Cheater's producers, the suspect acquiesces half-heartedly that he did wrong by Jessica. However, he refuses to explain his actions. The companion, Tanae, would only state to Cheaters that she and the suspect continue to see one another. 